uh, in details. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, the during the uh, the uh, 2020, uh, 21 also we have indicated many regions that are flooding activity. Uh, uh, and uh, right side you can uh, see that uh, the, this year 2020-22, we have clearly indicated that many regions of uh, uh, the uh, Central Indian region as well as the Pakistan uh, region, we have we have correctly indicated that uh, uh, the flood uh, there is a, a possibility of uh, 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 the uh, flood, and uh, uh, but however we have me, uh, that uh, that for our outlook in this also missed in the uh, large uh, flooding also we have uh, for uh, we have issued for the foothills of uh, Himalaya also, but that is not uh, happened. And now uh, yeah, we can look that closely that uh, Indian region, what is the verification that uh, we, this is the, uh, uh, the left panel, it is showing that uh, the observed rainfall category and the right side is the, uh, India, the whatever the spatial uh, forecast we have issued in the month of April and May. Uh, in the uh, updated forecast, we have indicated that uh, some region of Northeast, North India, uh, Northeast India uh, that uh, there is a chance for rainfall deficiency. Uh, but uh, over, mo most of the region that uh, forecast came correct, similar to our. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, the, we are issuing that uh, outlook for temperature also. Uh, these are the uh, uh, tem minimum temperature forecast issued for, uh, for during the season. We have uh, uh, indicated that there is a chance for very above normal uh, uh, rainfall uh, temperature, uh, minimum temperature over the northern part of the region. Uh, this uh, uh, maximum temperature also uh, that is similar, uh, uh, similarly we have indicated. And this uh, caused the last uh, large uh, that uh, uh, snow melt as well as the runoff associated runoff that also uh, one reason for the uh, the uh, large uh, flood active uh, happened in the Pakistan. Uh, in addition to our forecast uh, rainfall forecast, we have correctly indicated this also. And uh, I, this is the verification of uh, the for the Indian region. Uh, most of the forecast is came uh, correct this this year. And now we can uh, look that uh, what are the synoptic scale systems are formed during the uh, monsoon season. And the uh, top panel it is showing that uh, tracks of monsoon depression. There were many uh, monsoon depression formed this year. Season's total is five. And well-marked pressure also uh, one. And low pressure three. Total, there were uh, 11 uh, low pressure systems formed during the season. And the, it, it can see that uh, uh, seasons uh, uh, number of uh, low pressure system days is, uh, is 67. It means most of the days some uh, low pressure system was uh, present uh, over the uh, Indian region. And uh, now we can I, I see the other I, I, the other uh, the West Pacific region. Uh, the what are the uh, situation? Uh, in the month of uh, the West Pacific, that is uh, in the uh, very few systems are formed uh, in the uh, month of uh, June and August month. And uh, uh, yeah, many systems recurve into in the northern, uh, uh, northward direction. And uh, but some a few, a few systems are formed in the uh, followed in the uh, track of uh, west and northwest. So these systems helps to form uh, uh, the uh, low pressure system of the, our uh, Bay of Bengal as a remnant. And uh, now the uh, intra-seasonal variation that uh, we can uh, look at what is the uh, MJU index over uh, the uh, over the region uh, over the over the tropics during the monsoon season. Uh, we can see a uh, left panel is the phase diagram of the same. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, Mangio was uh, mostly uh, uh, over phase one and eight during the month of June. It is uh, very unfavorable for monsoon rainfall activity. Our MGO was uh, favorable uh, three, four, and five during the uh, some days in July and August will help to get a very good rainfall. 
uh, the Corman zone rainfall anomaly that is the uh, active break cycle of this uh, this year monsoon is uh, in the right panel. Uh, even though we have given that uh, total very good rainfall, but large the variations was uh, observed during the season. And uh, we can look at uh, what are the other factors which is uh, uh, happen in the uh, uh, that less rainfall good rainfall activity in some month that what are the possible reason uh, this is uh, mainly because of many low pressure system that also will help to get very good rainfall over indian region but that also also uh, this interaction with the low pressure system with the uh, western uh, disturbance and uh, the snow melt also cause a large flood over the uh, pakistan region and the so during the September that uh, La Nina condition also it is uh, uh, it is one of the reason for the good rainfall over uh, the September and uh, more systems uh, uh, low pressure system developed over Bay of Bengal and moved uh, west northwestward and there are many uh, low pressure systems uh, formed uh, that also uh, uh, summarized here. And now we can uh, see that what are the uh, heavy rainfall and uh, uh, situation over the uh, over Indian region mainly. Uh, we have to uh, we will in future we will uh, uh, create similar uh, uh, diagrams for this entire South Asia. Uh, we uh, we can see that uh, there are many very uh, heavy rainfall events over the central part of the country associated with the low pressure system. Yeah, as well as uh, strong, uh, uh, the South Australia wind also caused very good, uh, uh, very uh, more uh, heavy rainfall uh, event over the western uh, west, west coast of India also. And the extremely rain, uh, right side panel is showing that extremely heavy rainfall. And this also indicate that uh, central India region also we have uh, received many uh, days uh, that heavy rainfall activity. You can see that uh, even though that uh, uh, the uh, over the northeast India uh, we got deficient de rainfall deficiency. However, we got many uh, uh, many days in June. We got very extremely very heavy rainfall in the uh, over the uh, north uh, east uh, region. And uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the significant weather events that is happening uh, happened uh, the, over the Indian region. I have summarized here. You can see that uh, there are uh, blue color indicating that uh, flood, flood or heavy rainfall uh, associated with uh, uh, associated with uh, extreme uh, event. And uh, the we can see many region in the central as well as the North as well as Northeast India, we got a flood, uh, flood uh, situation. And uh, uh, another important feature we can notice that uh, the uh, over the foothills of Himalaya, uh, mainly in the Bihar and uh, many regions uh, in the uh, in the east, uh, we got a uh, uh, large thunderstorm activity associated uh, death also. There are uh, right side, it is showing the loss of life due to many uh, uh, extreme events over the over the Indian region. We can see that uh, uh, the lightning associated with uh, the thunderstorm associated with the death is uh, uh, also more uh, more than uh, 700 people died due to this. And uh, uh, the uh, heavy rainfall and the flood also equally uh, uh, contributed more in the uh, loss of life. And I'm summarizing here, The this is my last slide. The uh, uh, Lanina condition was prevailed in the Equatorial Pacific during the monsoon season, uh, which is one of the important factors uh, which get uh, got good rainfall activity during the, the season. And the negative IOD condition was prevailed, but uh, however, the, uh, there are many low pressure systems and uh, 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 MG also was favorable for many, many days. Uh, so the impact of negative IOD is uh, very uh, not uh, much. Uh, the there were six uh, monsoon depression formed during the season. Out of that, one system intensified into deep depression uh, in 19 to 23rd uh, August. Out of six depressions, uh, four systems formed in the month of uh, month uh, August. 
and uh, uh, one in July and uh, one in September. Large intrasystemic variation observed during the monsoon season, mainly associated with low pressure system and uh, favorable phase of energy. And the West Pacific typhoon activity also helps to form a low pressure system over the of Panda. Impact of synoptic scale system on the performance of, of uh, was uh, significant, resulting in increased un uncertainty and predictability of seasonal and extended scale. That we have to, in, uh, in the climate change scenario, this is the condition we have to face that. Uh, uh, the uh, dynamical model correctly, our dynamical model correctly indicated that uh, 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 the Lanina development and the negative IOD during the months. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, Srijit, can you just uh, come out of this? Yes. 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 <clears throat> okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Sujit, uh, for a very detailed presentation on that uh, month's uh, long range forecasting, uh, wherever you have mentioned the creativity of the forecast and also some, some limitations, but also the different improvement and different synaptic situations and different weather features like Lalina, then I, uh, IOD, then your ENSO uh, and others. Uh, and also a very interesting thing that you have also in, you are telling indicated that a uh, huge flooding in Pakistan, but uh, we we may revisit also that forecast and the huge flooding. But whatever the footprints you have now shown to us about the Teladep is very very encouraging. So once again on behalf of Sama and Sapom, uh, I mean thanks very much for your presentations. Thank you very much. So. Uh, so uh, uh, we are going to uh, start our next session, uh, which will be very, very interesting. Well, it would be very interesting. And as Dr. Rathor is not there, I am just, uh, I'll just uh, support Dr. Rathor uh, that, uh, to moderate the session. So our, uh, where we will be discussing uh, what are the uh, rainfall, what is the forecast and how this has been translated into the uh, agreement adversaries in 2022 and also some features of uh, uh, this agreement adversaries uh, in, in general. So first speaker is Dr. Eskebal. Uh, he is known to almost uh, a, 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 in, uh, all the people in India, even also the farming community is a, one of the leading agrometeorologists and, and different tools he has prepared Recently, he has prepared that a dynamic crop weather calendar is very, very interesting. And also, he is also connected to the advising the farming community through agromet advisory service. And he has also have a very outstanding uh, papers on agrometeorology uh, and real allied sciences. So we are very happy that Dr. S.K. Bal as a project coordinator of TIDA is with us. So over to Dr. S.K. Bal for his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Navansu. Uh, just let me share my screen. So is it visible? To all of you? Yes, visible. Navansu, yes. Okay. Yes, visible. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, good morning, all. Uh, respected President Sama, Dr. Tagi, President Safong, though Dr. Rathor is not with us now, Dr. Ellis Rathor, Secretary Sama, Dr. Somiswar Das, Secretary Safong, Dr. Navansu, Dr. Sista, Dr. Abdul, and some of my senior colleagues are here, Dr. Ramana Rao, Dr. Vice Ramakrishna, Dr. A. M. Seth, Dr. Vas Pandey, uh, Dr. Atri is also here, I think, Dr. Surinder, and some of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Sawan, Dr. Rajit, so many people are uh, here. So one second, good morning uh, to all of you. So the time given to me is just 10 minutes. So I'll try to finish my presentation within the time. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Srijit had a very good presentation about uh, the scenario of uh, monsoon in 2022 and uh, its variability and uh, you know special you know distribution of rainfall across the country and uh, our neighboring country also. Uh, so with this, uh, 
uh, just this is uh, you know the monsoon anomaly of uh, india if you look at the for the last 140 150 years we can see that so much of variation is there every year you know uh, we don't uh, though we have a good forecast uh, um, you know system nowadays established but uh, uh, in each year every year you, you can see the lot of you know variation and recently if you look at the last uh, you know 10 years you can see that how much deep and how much you know excess rainfall years are there uh, and uh, we know that in india we have more, around 60% area is under rainfall agriculture so the onset of monsoon, the withdrawal, the rainfall distribution between these two, is there any break monsoon, and also the dry spell dynamics within that period. It is the most important factor which actually governs the Indian agriculture. So looking at that, in this year, in 2022, if we look at the meteorological subdivision scale, uh, here we can see that, you know, in some of the areas of India, this is for you know uh, the people because they are from other than in, uh, India. So in some of the states, we can see that rainfall started in a very good note, but you know when uh, after that it, it again you know it, it uh, went into negative. Uh, you know. in some of the areas we, we can see that the rainfall was in a deficit condition initially and that persisted throughout the year. And in some of the areas, if you can see the rainfall was a negative mode, but uh, you know after that it was a surplus by you know we can see here that by fifty percent, by thirty percent for each year. So uh, in India, you know if you look at different uh, you know regions, different states, different districts, different scales, uh, we see that you know the rainfall scenario is quite different. So when we talk of you know agromet uh, operational agro agromet advisories. So we have to really understand the rainfall, you know, historical, you know, pattern, the probability, and what exactly is happening this year. What is the forecast, and how accurate will be the forecast? So all these things actually, uh, it 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 should be you know, part of the you know that you know uh, agromet advisory preparation. Uh, and in this year, you know, we, we can see that in India, around you know thirty two percent area, uh, you know, was uh, around. Uh, under normal monsoon, around 40%, sorry, uh, above normal, 40% around normal, and 28% area. Uh, it, this is just in general. Uh, it uh, you know, experienced a below normal type of monsoon. And uh, before uh, we discuss the monsoon, you know, 2022, we should also understand that this year there was a, uh, you know, heat wave condition in the whole of India, where here you can see that the maximum temperature, you know, since you know mid January up to May end, you can see that how much you know the temperature is uh, in the higher side, and also the western disturbance activities were little bit you know uh, lower side. So both this increase in temperature and you know uh, reduced rainfall actually impacted the you know uh, whole North Indian conditions, and this also affected uh, say, some of the areas where uh, you know uh, some of the areas where sowing was affected and you know. So that that also had an influence on the you know cropping pattern you know then uh, cr cropping health all those all those aspects. And uh, if we look at uh, you know how this uh, monsoon uh, 2022 had impact uh, you know on sowing of crops. If we look at this year uh, monsoon scenario, the northeast uh, received a good amount of rainfall in the initial uh, you know initial uh, time of the monsoon season. But after that, the rainfall, you know, was a little bit up below, below normal. But uh, uh, if you look at the uh, Rajasthan and some part of uh, Central India and uh, Northwest India, there was uh, heavy rainfall. Here. And here we can see that some of the examples just have lifted, uh, listed here. We can see that in Western Uttar Pradesh, you know, we uh, faced a rainfall deficit condition during the month of June. And June is the time where, you know, we start our, you know, sowing operations. So farmers should advise for you know a sowing of short duration varieties of a particular pulse crop that is present peak. And uh, here I I just try to uh, give uh, you know scenarios as well as what type of uh, advisories that we have uh, given to farmers. And here uh, the present peak was you know, short duration present peak was uh, you know suggested for the farmers. And in northern India, uh, like you know Jammu region, you know there was a lot of rainfall in the pre monsoon season. So farmers are advised to take the advantage of that rain moisture that is available in the soil. 
and uh, they were uh, you were advised to start the you know preparing the nursery and uh, in case of south interior karnataka which is the southern part of india there is a lot of rainfall during the uh, month, month of may so uh, they had a sufficient moisture as there so that's why the long duration crops like uh, you know pigeon pea red gram of certain varieties were recommended and uh, because you know the monsoon dynamics also affects you know uh, harvest so we also found that uh, this monsoon 2022 had a impact on the harvesting of the crops that in uh, west bengal that is uh, you know eastern part of india uh, the forecast was you know for a normal rainfall during the last week of uh, september so uh, you know it was advised to harvest the mature rice cultivars as early as possible because there was a forecast of the rain and in the central uh, indian part the maratwara region which is a you know dry, dry land uh, type of condition is there a farmers are advised to store the harvested uh, you know pods or grains because there is a you know chance of rainfall was there so this type of, of, of forecast was there this type of agronomic advisories were there uh, in, in, uh, with respect to the harvesting of the crops and in jharkhand uh, which is also in eastern part of india the farmers were advised to harvest different mature kharif crops during the favorable weather conditions as there were some you know uh, like, we know that this year a lot of uh, you know at the end of the uh, monsoon lot of dry 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 pattern was observed uh, in, in jharkhand in the uh, bihar in the eastern up areas and uh, also in this monsoon 2022 uh, you know a lot of uh, you know disease and pest uh, were, uh, outbreaks were there I've just listed some of those, like you know, Phytophthora blight disease in pigeon pea, leaf spot in turmeric, leaf eating caterpillar uh, in some of the crops, then Gandhi bug in early on rice, thrips in rice nursery it was found, shoot borer in mango, and blast in paddy. So, uh, and this this way uh, observed in different parts of the country. For example, with the with the Bihar, Maharashtra, it is the Maharashtra central part of India. This is Madhya Maharashtra. These three are from Maharashtra. In West Bengal, eastern part. konkan is the western part of the country so these are some of the diseases that were found and uh, the relevant uh, agromet advisories were uh, uh, were issued to the farmers and uh, i i'll just tell you how this agro advisories are prepared in india in my subsequent slide so these are some of the examples of you know uh, different kinds of uh, you know diseases and uh, pest that we found this year these are the major because besides these all these vitamin listed There are many other diseases and pests that also occur. And uh, uh, if we look at the different extreme events, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Sridhar has already told that what type of extremes uh, we observed in this monsoon in terms of extreme rain or drought type of conditions. So uh, we in uh, Rajasthan, you know, uh, we have already uh, read in the newspapers that a lot of rainfall was there, so heavy rainfall conditions were there in, in Odisha also. Though in the latter part there were some deficit conditions. heavy rainfall also was observed in assam and drought in especially in bihar eastern up and also in jharkhand though it was a little bit susceptible uh, at a scale so uh, this type of extreme events also the, while preparing the agronomic advisories these conditions also were taken into consider and uh, for example in rajasthan when there was a heavy rainfall condition in the first week of july so the advisory was to time this so the kharif crop was not possible so there's farmers advised to grow uh, some alternate crops and uh, due to light heavy rain thunderstorms at different districts of odisha also the farmers are advised to make provision for the drainage because we know that drainage is one of the major component when uh, we have some uh, you know water water level conditions there and uh, similarly uh, you know some of the you know uh, places where there was a you know dry spell uh, you know extended dry spell and uh, sandy rainfall conditions some of the advisories were uh, issued to the farm so uh, then uh, you know uh, in india if we look at uh, how this agromet advisories are prepared and uh, disseminated and who are the agencies responsible so in india basically uh, you know this is a uh, in uh, collaborative project between uh, you know india meteorological department and indian council of agriculture research and uh, Uh, the whole country now the imd is uh, trying to uh, you know establish the district agromet units uh, uh, and previously uh, some of the units were agromet field units so now they are trying to establish around 660 uh, dumb centers uh, one each at each district 
and uh, and this is in collaboration with Indian Council of Agriculture Research. And uh, these centers have been established in the Krishi Vigyan Kendra of ICAI, and where uh, you know a subject matter specialist, specialist exclusively uh, posted uh, you know uh, in uh, agriculture meteorology from agriculture meteorology or uh, some of the allied uh, you know discipline uh, scientists. And uh, they also one uh, agrometer observer is there. So and in uh, consultation with other subject matter specialists from uh, plant pathology or uh, entomology, agronomy, soil scientist, uh, extension specialist. So the agrometer advisories are prepared and disseminated to farmers through different uh, you know uh, different mode. And uh, this is uh, basically uh, we we, we do it twice a week. That is Tuesday and Friday. And, uh, and at present, the scale of this advisory is uh, district, and in some of the blocks also it has been uh, it, it has been done uh, on, a, on a pilot basis for a test basis. And uh, the, and these uh, these uh, actually uh, agro advisories. Uh, this is a sample agro advisory that you can see. Uh, this is for a particular place. And uh, similarly, uh, IMD and ICR also. Uh, issuing uh, a uh, agreement weekly agreement advisories, which is basically we do it on Friday. And in case of uh, the uh, twice a week advisory, this is based on the medium range weather forecast. But this advisory is basically uh, done on the basis of extended range weather forecast. Uh, we receive it from IMD, and they, all the 25 acre farm centers they prepare this uh, uh, you know agreement advisories, and this is sent to. Uh, all the and, and this advisory is basically for policymakers, whereas this advisory is basically you know I mean for the farmers. And uh, in India, uh, if you look at uh, how uh, what is the number of beneficiaries of uh, this uh, agreement advisories? So at present, uh, uh, at present, more than uh, six crore farmers or sixty million farmers are directly you know uh, or indirectly getting uh, benefited. And one portal is their M Kishan portal, where more than 50 million farmers, or five crore farmers, are registered. And uh, you know, this twice a week uh, that advisory is based on the uh, you know medium range weather forecast that is being pushed to all these farmers. And besides, these are many other modes where we uh, disseminate this agronomic advisories. Uh, and and basically, in case in case of M Kishan portal, we we push it in a you know text SMS mode. And uh, there are some, uh, you know, uh, voice SMS also, and there are some personal contact to different private, uh, you know, players are there like, uh, you know, Reliance, uh, Kishan, Sanchar, and uh, then a personal contact uh, mode is also there. And there are many WhatsApp groups have been created by different SAUs and the scientists who are involved in this agrometer advisories. And also uh, there are some of the, you know, uh, this agrometer advisory bulletins are also uh, placed in, in Common places like village panchayat and all those things. So these are different uh, ways that this uh, agronomic advisory is now in, is being pushed to farmers uh, in India. And uh, if we look at how agronomic advisories uh, are beneficial, you know, uh, recently uh, there was a report by NCAER uh, in India, which is one agency, which, which estimated that you know due to this monsoon mission project and uh, this agronomic advisories. More than fifty thousand crore, you know, rupees of benefit benefit has been done uh, through this uh, total uh, program. And uh, you know, we, and uh, and um, uh, my unit or the project which in which I am uh, you know working, we have also uh, done some of the uh, you know uh, we have tried to find out that how this agronomic advisory is beneficial to the farmers. So uh, on a farmer to farmer basis, we have tried that what is the cost incurred and what type of uh, what, what kind of uh, agreement advisories he has uh, followed, and uh, what kind of benefit that he has uh, accrued from from that uh, you know advisories? So uh, this is, for example, one farmer which uh, which he, which grew soybean in four acre of uh, land, and finally you know he followed the agreement advisories like you know whether he should go for sowing, uh, at what time and the spraying and all, all those aspects. But what, what, what is the best time to go for fertilization for irrigation? So he, here he, he got the benefit cost ratio as 2.44 compared to you know 1.86 which was uh, entered by you know the farmers who did not follow the uh, so this is just one example of how you know this agreement advisories can be beneficial and if we uh, if you if you calculate in a country wide for example we have uh, 
uh, 60 million of farmers. So each farmer is suppose benefited by some amount. So you can multiply and you can see that uh, what type of benefit that you can expect from this kind of services. And uh, just uh, before I end my presentation, just uh, because Dr. Naval also told, told that we, we, because this uh, my unit AICF and agrometrology is trying to develop some of the modules. Dr. Atri is also here, who is also a partner to our program. So we, we have also tried to develop some of the decision support system, which can help in preparing the agrometer advisors. As you know that, you know, there are different uh, models are available, different uh, technologies are available, tools are available nowadays, which we all can use uh, uh, for preparing this, you know, help in preparing this agreement advisories. But only question is that whatever module or this the decision support system we should develop, it should be simple and it should, uh, you know, uh, the input should be, you know, minimal because, uh, we have very little uh, uh, minimum places where we have all the information about you know climate and all these uh, weather, weather, weather variables. But if you look at you know uh, practical applicability, so minimum data set if you can use and uh, uh, to run a distance support system, definitely it will be you know easy to use by the subject matter specialists who are involved in uh, preparing the agronomic advisories. And also uh, the applicability will be more. So in that aspect, all the, we have. Uh, in collaboration with IMD, we have developed a simple distance support system. We name it Dynamic Propagate Calendar. And, uh, and we have tested it across more than 90 locations of the country uh, for different uh, crops. And uh, you know, these are some of the results. For example, what is the water requirement between two crop stages? And what is the you know, best time to go for sowing? Uh, so, and we have validated it across the centers, different kind of representing different kind of you know, uh, agricultural regions. So you can see the agreement. That, that means you know whatever model that we have developed with DSS, it is it is very very good working in a very good mode, and this can be used by you know uh, so the people who are basically uh, preparing this agreement advisories. Uh, basic decisions they can take whether this is the right time. They can uh, advise the farmer. Okay, now uh, the, the model says that okay this is the best time to go for sowing. Please go for sowing. And and this model is based on you know. Uh, and it, it is taking account the soil moisture dynamics, taking account the past weather, historical weather, current weather, as well as the weather forecast. What is going to happen in the next five days, seven days? And uh, uh, you, you can see that validation of phenology, we have done it, validation of sowing dates. And uh, this is the uh, uh, software that uh, has been, you know, we have got the copyright and this is being uh, you know, used. Now it is being, we have given it to, uh, you know, IMD for implementing in 90. Uh, districts uh, and hopefully we'll be extending it to other districts of the country and this is a paper that uh, you know all can read if they can know that how in what, what way this particular um, you know DSS has been developed this is given in this particular paper. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. So I think the time was short so I was a little bit fast but uh, it will be it will be thank you thank you very much. Thank you Dr. Bal. <clears throat> Uh, with a very stipulated time, you have explained this 2022, how you, uh, what is the features of the rainfall temperature, the dry condition, various parts of India, and how this uh, agromet advisory service is addressing to that, uh, not only that, uh, I mean, even on super pest and disease, also you have showed uh, that the advanced tool, how is uh, they are working and how India and uh, I, ICR is, uh, is is working together for the more ad, uh, better and better adversaries in the country. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be uh, looking forward in future also to hear more from you also. Uh, so, thank you, thank you, uh, you. Yeah, uh, so our next uh, uh, speaker will be uh, very interesting uh, for Bangladesh, uh, Dr. Mazarul Aziz. Uh, he is now the Deputy Director, Coordination, uh, Field Service Wing, uh, Department of uh, Agriculture Extension, Bangladesh. But he is having a, uh, he, he in fact, uh, he is the pioneer in the agronomic advisory services uh, in, uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, uh, so, and he has done excellent job uh, in, in the agronomic advisory service in a very district level with different tools or like that. So uh, I am now requesting Dr. Mazarul Aziz to give his presentation. Over to Dr. Mazarul Aziz. Thank you, everybody. And uh, good morning to you all, uh, respected chair and uh, esteemed uh, 
participants of the uh, uh, now uh, of this webinar. So I would like to share my screen here. Okay. Is my presentation visible? Yes, but you make it full screen. Yeah, now it's okay. Ah, okay. Fine, Thank fine. you. Uh, uh, I have uh, basically uh, from Bangladesh perspective of view, we have heard a lot of uh, development in India uh, by, for, by the presentation of Dr. Bal. So uh, my presentation will be uh, very less uh, technical and also the, the uh, real output of uh, using the MET uh, information. So I'll be discussing my, uh, for your information, my discussion will be very short and I will be, uh, uh, there will be a much less slide than the previous one. So I uh, will be discussing regarding the impacts of uh, monsoon rainfall variability on rain-fed almond rice cultivation in Bangladesh during 2022. So uh, while analyzing the monsoon, uh, this uh, information I got from uh, Bangladesh Meteorological Department, the south, uh, the uh, the normal date of onset of south mo southeast monsoon, uh, it, uh, in the south southeastern districts, second June which overcomes the whole country during first half of June. And accordingly, the Southwest monsoon in Bangladesh in 2022, and it uh, advanced up to Chattogram division on 2nd June, according to the observation. And the monsoon starts withdrawal from northwestern part of the country. And the normal date of withdrawal from this part is 30th September, while uh, uh, in, in case of uh, 2022, it was uh, the southwest monsoon withdrawn from Bangladesh on 20th October. So, sorry. So, the, uh, our government uh, initially uh, had set a target to bring 5.65 million hectares of land under Amon, uh, that is rain fed uh, 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 rice cultivation in Bangladesh. Uh, and you know that in Bangladesh, uh, the Amon or the monsoon rice, it covers larger area in Bangladesh. And Amon crop comprises 38% of the national rice demand and is mainly rain fed as the process of preparing seed bed and transplanting of seedlings is almost over during the peak June to August rainy season. Bangladesh experienced heat waves and I, I will not go for the data, but I am just uh, explaining in text. Bangladesh has experienced heat waves and lowest rainfall in four decades during the monsoon of this year. A change in the weather, condi uh, weather condition that has affected rain-fed paddy cultivation. The abnormal weather patterns delayed the rain-fed uh, rain paddy cultivation, as we observed it all over Bangladesh. July and August, these two months are the main rainy months in Bangladesh. In the current monsoon season, the country witnessed the lowest rain. According to Bangladesh Meteorological Department, this year's monsoon has seen the lowest rainfall in the last four decades. Bangladesh usually receives about 500 millimeter rain in July, but this year it was 211 millimeter only. That is 57.6% less, not happened in last 46 years. In August, it was 39.6% less than normal. In the last 20, 23 or 24 years, August has not seen so little rain. And this is the graphical presentation and the data was collected from BMD long range forecast. As you know that uh, the blue color is uh, the uh, normal rainfall. That is the historical rainfall. And uh, the uh, orange one is the observed rainfall and uh, uh, the line that is uh, the deviation of rainfall in percentage. As you know that uh, uh, July, August, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, July and August are the main se uh, months of uh, preparing the uh, cultivation of uh, rain-fed almond rice. And uh, as you see the anomaly of the uh, rainfall pattern uh, through this graphical presentation. And such long spell, no rain, um, 
occurred in uh, is very rare as i mentioned that uh, we haven't seen it uh, last four decades and it's damaging agriculture and all sectors of biodiversity transplanting uh, transplantation of seedlings generally begins from the second week of august and the lands needed to be prepared with six inches of deep water farmers in different areas have to spend extra six thousand to eight thousand taka per hectare as irrigation costs for low rainfall in June and July during the peak seedling time. Random load shedding had also hampered irrigation in many areas. Water requirement was too low to soak jute. August, September rains have great impact on getting a bumper. So in the next uh, slide, So uh, now I will discuss regarding the agromet advices for the farmers. You know that uh, uh, through our World Bank funded project, Bang uh, agrometeorological information systems developed that uh, we jointly developed uh, and, uh, and it is operational since 2018. And uh, DA is advised, uh, DA advised for the farmers add to supplementary irrigation. As I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, the farmers uh, were, uh, irrigating their land to prepare the land to, for transplanting of seedlings. They also advise the farmers to transplant the seedlings swiftly after expected rain occurs. And farmers were advised to irrigate main field by diesel run shallow tubules. Transplanting of uh, also we uh, advised the, to transplant seedlings of shortly matured varieties to ensure maximum output. And uh, finally, I will be discussing regarding the uh, way forward. As you know that uh, in this region, Bangladesh is very much, uh, uh, very much behind than the development of the agromet advisories of India. So uh, uh, we'll be uh, thinking uh, for more collaboration with all the relevant actors like Sa Sama, SAFOM, and also SASCOF, South Asia Hydromet Forum, all these things, uh, all the organizations should work uh, together to develop the um, uh, more science-based agromet advisories uh, for, for this region. So uh, lower than uh, the way forward, what I, I would like to mention some points here, the lo lower than usual rainfall is very alarming. We have to be prepared for the future. As you know that a lot of development are happening regarding the SPS forecasting. And uh, this is very much required along with long range forecast. And also the main important thing is dry spell advisory during the monsoon season is uh, very much required. And also systemic research is required on anomaly of meteorological parameters during the onset, ongoing and withdrawal phases of Southwest monsoon. Strengthening of the early warning system to forecast extreme weather and, and uh, provide action oriented advisories. As you know that uh, uh, as we didn't uh, uh, experience the uh, less rainfall in this region for last 40 years, we basically we are not prepared for this uh, uh, situation. So uh, a lot of uh, work should be done be, uh, to alarm the farmers or pro uh, provide the advisory for the farmers. Effective and efficient coordination between education research Bangladesh Meteorological Department, Bangladesh Water Development Board, DAE, and other extension service providers. As you know that uh, the, uh, the coordination is still very, uh, I would like to say that it is not appropriate to uh, develop and disseminate the agromet advisories. And also uh, I would like to say that capacity building programs uh, for all the actors like uh, the meteorologist, the agrometeorologist, or the universities or the officials or the extension service provider all require the capacity building program. And appropriate funding, this is very much required. Uh, whether uh, we, can, uh, um, uh, we can fund uh, more in this uh, sector, it will be uh, very much helpful to develop, uh, uh, develop a robust agromet advisory service in this region. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Mazarul Aziz. Uh, uh, you have uh, mentioned, you know, this uh, 
rainfall in four decades it is low and how this amon paddy has been affected and how more investment has been made through supplementary irrigations even impacting the jute also and subsequently you have mentioned that your uh, agromet advisory services has correctly given the supplementary irrigations uh, the most interesting point is that these are the things which will be the big inputs to sama and safom that in future uh, what, has, what already you have mentioned that you need the collaboration here this is one of the prime objective of today's meeting so thank you very much dr ajit for your very beautiful presentation and showed how uh, the agronomic advisory system is there and how it is helping thank you dr ajit uh, our next uh, uh, speaker uh, is from bhutan and he is uh, mr sharing wanchen he is the deputy chief agriculture officer agriculture research and uh, extension division department of agriculture minister of agriculture and forest in bhutan so uh, i have a brief uh, uh, meeting with him and is very very energetic person in bhutan who is uh, looking about that how this agronomic system should take place uh, in bhutan uh, taking the stock of bangladesh india and like that so over to dr wanchen for your presentation uh, good morning to everyone is my slides visible yes yes okay thank you honorable chairperson uh, dr navansu and to all the esteemed participants uh, first of all uh, i would like to uh, thank uh, safom and sama for giving me this opportunity to present uh, on the case from bhutan but more so learn about uh, learn from the neighboring practices uh, because uh, agromet uh, services in bhutan is uh, fairly recent and uh, we are yet to actually uh, really operationalize uh, our services in the ground and uh, in my presentation i will take you through the agromet program that uh, bhutan is uh, implementing and uh, also explain a bit about the summer monsoon 2020 the recent one and some of the extreme weather event impacts that uh, bhutan has experienced and uh, uh, lastly we'll end my presentation uh, with agromet advisory services that uh, we are trying to replicate but uh, i would also like to uh, inform the floor here that uh, my presentation would uh, be more of a narrative rather than a data backed but uh, Nonetheless, uh, I'll try to explain to the best of my abilities. So uh, basically now, uh, the agromet program, which is under the Agriculture Research and Extension Division, has now been uh, renamed. It's now the division is the Agriculture Research and Innovation Division, and it is one of the five uh, programs that the division is uh, implementing. So we have field crops program, the hill, uh, horticulture research program, agromet program, technology innovation program, the socioeconomic program. So uh, coming to the summer monsoon outlook uh, uh, that uh, the National Center for Hydrology and Metrology has uh, produced uh, summer uh, months in Bhutan comprises of the June, July, August, and September. So uh, the National Center for Hydrology and Metrology, and they have prepared the seasonal forecast for Bhutan, and it was uh, prepared with inputs from the global and regional prediction centers, and as well as the national climate uh, data that is available from 1996. And the final outlook is based on the consensus outlook of the South Asian uh, climate uh, outlook forum sasco and products uh, from the wmo and uh, global producing centers of long ridge uh, with the forecast so the ncof was uh, produced uh, by our national uh, hydromet uh, services on the 27th of may uh, after uh, uh, consenting to uh, the uh, sasco uh, forecast which was uh, participated uh, from the 26th to 28th of April, 2022. And um, the, the forum found out that the El Nino and La Nina, as well as the negative Indian Ocean Dipole conditions are uh, likely to prevail during the uh, summer months in 2022. And uh, the final outlook of the summer season over Bhutan is uh, based on the uh, 
various uh, products uh, that uh, I'll be showing in the uh, next slide. So uh, almost all uh, models predicted that the pre uh, precipitation, the rainfall would be above normal uh, and uh, as well as the uh, maximum and the minimum temperature, which was uh, uh, concluded that it would be uh, slightly above normal. So the rainfall forecast for 2022 summer season for Bhutan, uh, like I said, is going to be, uh, was uh, decided that it's going to be slightly above normal. And uh, when we uh, talk about the normal range in Bhutan, it's the uh, average rainfall for the summer season of Bhutan from 1996 to 2021. And uh, coming to the extreme weather events, uh, uh, Bhutan has been experiencing uh, a lot of extreme weather events. In fact, uh, uh, Dr. Navansu during his uh, visit in uh, Bhutan reminded uh, that uh, Bhutan, uh, considering the weather impacts uh, that's happening in the region, will also experience uh, uh, the late uh, withdrawal of uh, monsoon. And uh, he even wrote to through the mail that it is uh, it would be uh, better if we can uh, advise the farmers uh, uh, accordingly. So um, uh, just recently, you know, uh, uh, there was uh, uh, a cyclone, uh, Citrang, and uh, I believe that uh, the damage was uh, more intense uh, in Bangladesh compared to Bhutan. But uh, in Bhutan also, you know, uh, the cyclone, uh, Citrang, uh, really didn't impact, but it uh, uh, sort of uh, caused some sense of uh, fear to the farmers. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, to, uh, this is uh, just to cite an example that uh, these events are uh, occurring on a regular basis, uh, particularly uh, towards uh, the uh, harvesting season, uh, because uh, till now uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the withdrawal of monsoon would normally take uh, uh, towards the mid of the September now, monsoon is even delayed uh, towards uh, the end of October. So these are signs of uh, climate change and uh, we uh, definitely needs to be more prepared. And um, when there is a more prolonged rainfall, particularly in the Southern belts of the country, they are, uh, the sprouting of the grains have been you know, uh, reported. So it's quite difficult to advise uh, the farmers uh, uh, when such uh, incidences happen as well. So, and uh, this is one of the uh, impacts of the summer monsoon this time. There was a flash flood in Jasabi uh, in the eastern part of the Bhutan, uh, where, you know, uh, a lot of uh, paddy uh, fields uh, were damaged and it even caused a uh, 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 deaths to some of the uh, people living there. Uh, about uh, five of the people were killed uh, in the process. Uh, so uh, since we do not have uh, uh, data from this year and it's still being collected, uh, let me remind uh, the esteemed participants here that uh, last year uh, in October, we had uh, five, around five days of continuous rainfall and that uh, in fact affected around uh, 18 districts of the 20 districts uh, uh, of the country. And uh, uh, paddy is uh, being one of the major uh, uh, staple crop was uh, heavily uh, damaged and close to 3,829 households were affected. Uh, the amount might uh, seem meager to all the participants here, but for Bhutan, it's, uh, it's a huge amount. And, uh, you know, uh, in terms, if you estimate the uh, loss uh, uh, pegging at with the cost of production uh, around uh, uh, around uh, 90 million uh, worth of uh, uh, patty were affected. affected. So uh, similar to patty, even other crops such as buckwheat, maize, millet, wheat, and mustard and quinoa, uh, they were also damaged, but uh, the major damage was uh, experienced in patty. Now, uh, these are some of the snapshots from the paddy damage that we experienced uh, last year. And um, coming to the agromet advisory services, uh, uh, right from the top, uh, the concern is there. Uh, in fact, if you uh, uh, look at the uh, message on the left, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, 
a message uh, dropped on the WhatsApp uh, group uh, by the Honorable Minister of Bhutan, uh, frequently uh, asking uh, the department about the status of the agrometer program and how actually we are going to, uh, we are uh, following up with the National Center for Hydrology and Metrology and he didn't actually want to uh, see any uh, damage uh, happening uh, to uh, the farmers such as last year. So uh, there are different modes of uh, uh, agromet uh, advisory generation and dissemination. Of course, uh, we were uh, assisted by uh, Dr. Navansu uh, and uh, he will be further engaging with uh, the Bhutan team on uh, improving the, the modalities that we have here in the country. And uh, we try our best, uh, at least, uh, to uh, advise uh, the farmers on time, uh, particularly learning from the uh, lessons that we experienced last year. So uh, the uh, information was relayed uh, to all the uh, district agriculture officials, as well as the block level agriculture official, and uh, particularly one of the districts in the national media uh, reported that uh, because of uh, the timely intervention from the National Met uh, uh, Office, as well as from the Department of Agriculture, at least uh, the farmers uh, avoided harvesting of the uh, crop uh, during the uh, rainy uh, during the rainy season, and that itself, uh, you know, sort of uh, saved uh, the farmers' uh, hard work from uh, from uh, from uh, ex uh, from damage. So. Uh, these are some of the benefits of uh, the agromet advisories, and uh, we will gradually be uh, learning from the best practices of the region, from the neighboring countries. Uh, we will try and improve uh, on the system. And in fact, uh, Dr. Navansu, during the uh, mission visit, was here in the country, and he uh, guided the agromet focus in the country. Uh, on the uh, uh, in actually operationalizing the agromet services and uh, uh, it's not uh, reflected here in my slide. Uh, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Navansu for assisting uh, the Department of Agriculture as well as uh, NCHM in developing in guiding our agromet focus to uh, develop the the crop weather uh, calendar. In few uh, weeks time, I believe the final. Uh, product uh, will be ready and uh, we'll be happy to share the uh, the draft uh, with you as well. And uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, the crop weather calendar will be of immense uh, immense use to the Putinese, uh farming uh, community as well as the extension workers. So uh, one, uh, you know, recommendations that uh, Dr. Nawansu uh, mentioned uh, or recommended uh, during his mission visit is we could perhaps uh, uh, allocate or prioritize more of uh, these uh, combined uh, rice harvesters uh, during his uh, visit because uh, our method of harvesting is mostly traditional based and uh, especially when it coincides with uh, a rainy season, uh, there's nothing much you can do. So uh, these are some of uh, the, uh, perhaps uh, as we move on, we need to uh, uh, adopt uh, more of these technologies so as to minimize the uh, loss and uh, adapt uh, to the changing climate. So with that, uh, I would also like to end my uh, brief presentation and uh, thank you for patiently listening to my, my presentation. Thank you. Over to you, Doctor. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Shering Wanchen. Uh, you have nicely uh, mentioned that how uh, this uh, Bhutan agromet adversary is emerging, and you have nicely pointed out about agromet program. The southwest monsoon has different impact and extremes, and how this agromet adversary is been uh, generating now. Uh, and also, you have mentioned about how Sitrang has affected. One of the important thing you have mentioned, which world community wanted to know from all of you, that uh, climate change. You are also uh, pressing the need for. Um, different adaptations and mitigations in climate change. The most interesting point is that your ministers, you know, interest about that farming uh, farmers and how we are giving adversity. I think uh, in future you will be coming in a very uh, flying colors in giving this kind of adversities to that and Safom and Sama uh, and all others are 
uh, definitely will be uh, we cooperate with you. So thank you, Dr. Wanchen. So our uh, next uh, presenter is from Nepal. Uh, she is uh, Mrs. Uh, Bhupati Pokharel. He is a senior uh, divisional uh, meteorologist, Department of Hydrology and Meteorology, <clears throat> uh, Nepal. So over to uh, Bhupati Pokharel. Thank you, yeah, Dr. we can Navan. see your presentation. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Navansu. Uh, so I will be starting with background. Uh, agriculture contributes to 27% of GDP and provides employment opportunities to 65% uh, of population. And similarly, you know, rice, uh, as uh, in other South Asian countries, rice ranks first in terms of air cultivated production and livelihood of the people. The total area under rice cultivation is about 1.46 million hectare, producing 5.56 million metric tons with productivity of 3.81 amp per HA, which is transplanted in June and harvested in October, which is mostly dependent on rain from June to September. I think I'm not showing my slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, I would like to start from South Asian Climate Outlook Forum 2022. So according to consensus statement released by uh, 22nd uh, session of South Asian Climate Outlook Forum, normal to above normal rainfall was predicted during uh, 2022 Southwest monsoon season over most parts of South Asia and similarly uh, from our climate division also seasonal most, uh, monsoon outlook was issued, which predicted most parts of the country will receive normal to above normal rainfall. And uh, this is actually the observed total precipitation in monsoon season. And we have declared monsoon onset on uh, June uh, 5th and uh, withdrawal date on October 16th and total duration of monsoon was 134 days. And uh, uh, in those period, you know, percentage of normal, uh, when we take normal of 20, uh, 92 stations, 109.8% uh, and number of stations with above normal were about 51% and of a number of stations with normal were about 38%, 30%. And uh, these are the average uh, daily accumulated normal precipitation of 20 stations during the monsoon season. So it shows below near below rainfall overall agriculture sector experience uh, you know in some part we can also see uh, above normal rainfall but overall agriculture sector it experienced dry spells during monsoon season over whole nepal and especially in tarai region because most of our agriculture land is in tarai region and uh, this is the observed rainfall in June. And uh, when we talk about rice transplantation, it was transplantation. It was uh, delayed about two weeks, and you know, transplanted rice it was about ninety nine percent, and direct seeded uh, DSI it was one percent. And uh, uh, with problem because of you know prolonged uh, dry, it, it remained dry after uh, transplanting. So with problem was also uh, one of the issue which we face. And in July and August, we can see. Uh, these are the rainfalls, but uh, also, uh, as mentioned earlier, below rainfall, you know, it caused us a type of, uh, uh, it also caused an issue in transplantation and after transplantation also, a long period, uh, dry period was there, which was Asian silly. You can see in our, you know, probably in, in this, uh, you can see the percentage of rice plantation area was less compared to 2021. And record also shows that rice plantation was, uh, you know, done still up to August 15. And this <laughs> is yeah. uh, yeah. by Department yeah. of Agriculture. Yeah. Now, this is the yeah. rainfall yeah. observed in yeah. 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 In some part, we received rainfall, but overall, because it was not continuous rainfall and uh, a prolonged and dry period. So uh, actually this, um, you know, rainfall uh, were not uh, that favorable for, for us during this monsoon season. And uh, rainfall during harvesting period, heavy rains in mid-October discussed floods in Western and Eastern provinces with uh, delayed planting activities also by two weeks and weather conditions were generally favorable from November and also contribute moisture for winter crops, especially on lowland areas of the region. And these are the agro advisory bulletin, which we issue every 
Friday, every Friday, scientists from NARC and DHM sit together to do agromed advisory. And this has been going for a quite long period and it's essentially it's very helpful for our reason. And uh, this is the special way the bulletin for extreme event. And you can see the uh, extreme event uh, for special way the bulletin was also issued for from uh, meteorological forecasting division for, uh, I, this is only one case. And I think this is probably the a sixth one which we have issued during the monsoon season. And this was issued for Gandaki, Lumbini and Sudhu Pashim process. Similarly, uh, for a bulletin was also regularly issued for uh, how we can rescue flooded rice during heavy rainfall. And this you can see, this is in Nepali language and in which you can, uh, for giving uh, uh, drainage systems also and for um, uh, when to cut rice and when to harvest rice and when to, uh, how to just uh, just segregate uh, dry and uh, wet uh, rain we have to say we have also given this type of issues and uh, outbreak of patient diseases and uh, these are also these issues are generally settled through agromate advisories and call centers. And these are some of the examples, but it's still desire in you know, uh, our Nepali language. And we, here we, are, we have given how we can, um, how it, after we have given like, uh, I, how we can take care of these poultries uh, in, uh, as we are having minimum temperatures day by day. And similarly for these are also, we have also given how uh, we can use pests and diseases a pest for diseases, and these are the dissemination process and email to federal and provincial ministries, uh, NARC stations, 753 local labels, farmers groups, NGOs, and uh, we have also NTV news channel each Saturday. They broadcast after 8 p.m. Uh, after 8 p.m. and similarly SMS to farmers and uh, uh, NARC also they provide they also provide bulletins in their website and similarly mobile app like Hamburg Krishi, NAR Krishi and FN from, we also issue bulletins from FN, FM radios, Facebook pages, Krishi magazines, and we have also created Google groups, group, Google groups like NAR agromesh services. And benefits of agro advisories to farmers, they get seven days with a forecast and every Friday and a lot on extreme events and the advisories based on those events. And apart from that, they also get, you know, for, uh, for, uh, you know um, how they can use uh, the, um, uh, for pests or for diseases, how they can, how they can use that um, for their agriculture. And challenges ahead lack like location specific. Still, we have a challenges like location specific advisory because farmers they want location specific also. And uh, still, we have to work more on dissemination part. And it's still more effort is needed to reach to farmers. And again, we we have done much effort in preparing agromed advisories. But still, when we go to our farmers, uh, we can feel that uh, they are not actually getting all the, you know, what we are providing them advisory. So we still need to um, need more effort and require improve and customize weather forecast and weather information, which is the most essential because uh, these agro advisories, these are prepared based on uh, these um, weather informations and this year grievance from farmers as we focus more on seasonal outlook from the very first period and we didn't receive rainfall as expected. And in some areas it was below normal normal rainfall and drought conditions persist throughout the period. And in also some Western part, we experienced that, you know, they have to, uh, ha the, they have to feed the um, planted rice to the cattle as grass because they don't have sufficient rainfall. And lastly, thank you very much. It's still collaboration, cooperation, sharing, everything is re required between the partners. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a wonderful presentation you have made. You have uh, correctly mentioned about that, how the transplanting of rice has been affected by the very strong dry spell in Nepal. And also you have mentioned that flood in the Eastern and Western. And also this, uh, your bulletins you have prepared uh, even Friday and also the special bulletins uh, and also the pest and disease in, in infestations also. And also you have mentioned about what is the benefit and what are the challenges? I think as a whole, this presentation is a wonderful presentation. So you have very brief, uh, couple of minutes you have presented that what exactly happening 
uh, about this uh, monsoon 2022. So, and your last word is the cooperation. Yes, this is the uh, Sabwa and Sapom is looking forward and hopefully that will be growing slowly and slowly. Thank you very much, Madam, for your wonderful presentation. So our uh, next presenter is from Afghanistan. Uh, he is Mr. Wadullah Oisufi. He is an agromet expert and coordinator, Ministry of Agriculture <clears throat> uh, uh, and uh, Irrigation and Livestock, Afghanistan. So, uh, uh, so oh, and we have a made what Dr. Professor Taghi has mentioned, the sensitization program. So we made a sensitization program in uh, uh, in in Afghanistan, and he was the uh, main person who has coordinated. So it's over to uh, Mr. Wadullah. Hello, good morning, Dr. Nabansu, uh, okay. and everyone. Hello. Yes, yes, we can hear you. You can. Good morning to all uh, participants. Uh, I am Najibullah Osmani, head of uh, GIS in Agromed Department. <clears throat> As you know, my uh, uh, name was not uh, on agenda. I, um, I did not make a presentation. Uh, Wahidullah Yusufi, his name was in uh, the agenda. Uh, he is not with us now. He is working with FAO. Uh, I called him twice, but he did uh, not answer. Uh, I think uh, he's busy. If uh, I uh, talk with him, I will uh, him uh, you. But uh, now, can you request you uh, that uh, as you are uh, representing from Afghanistan, may not be you have any slide, but overall, can you just give some kind of information about how monsoon behaved in 2022 and what could be the agriculture i uh, means uh, very uh, briefly over to najibul no now uh, i'm not busy because uh, i'm i will call him if he makes some presentation i will share with you at, uh, by email mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. I'm okay. sorry for that. No problem, no issue. Okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, we'll wait if uh, uh, anybody will be there from Afghanistan. Uh, but now uh, it's time for Sri Lanka. Uh, so, uh, Mrs. Onusha, um, he is, she is Director, Climate Change and Research uh, Department uh, of uh, uh, of the of the Department of Meteorology in Sri Lanka. So over to you, Madam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nabonsu. Uh, good morning to all you. Yeah, just actually uh, that uh, we act, uh, the Department of Meteorology is act, actually doing only the acrometeorological activities, uh, mainly you focus on the climate, weather and climate related information. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, the, myself and Ms. Arunia Besekar from Agriculture Department, uh, we are uh, giving that presentation uh, jointly. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, the yeah, outline of my presentation, uh, I just uh, briefly explain climate and main agriculture season in Sri Lanka and also the seasonal forecasting and agrometeorological activities and finally experiences during the Southwest Monsoon. Uh, 2022. Uh, mainly actually that we are in Sri Lanka having four main rain season. So our agricultural uh, seasons uh, ba based on the uh, rainfall uh, pattern. Uh, with that uh, actually uh, the uh, significant rain season the, in the case of agriculture. So October, November because it contributes around the uh, Thirty percent of uh, annual rainfall uh, during that two months period. Uh, even though southwest monsoon contributes same amount of rainfall, but it lasts around five months period. Uh, but this uh, October November uh, it contributes the uh, thirty percent during the only two months period. And also this uh, 
uh, rainfall is uh, widespread, especially uh, because our dry zone is mainly uh, they are engaging in the agriculture field, especially rice and other crops as well. So this October November season is very much important for them. So with that, uh, that uh, uh, first in inter monsoon that mean March April and southwest monsoon season that. Uh, from May to September, that both season, uh, we, uh, the agricultural uh, practices, they call the Yala season. Uh, actually, that uh, th this season, the southwest monsoon, first winter monsoon season is where we have a very least amount of rainfall for the, as a whole. But southwest monsoon season, especially for the southwestern part, getting the heavy rainfall. But our the agricultural activities mostly uh, confined to the uh, dry zone of the country. So that is why uh, they mentioned about the minor rainy season for that season. Uh, so my season, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, second inter monsoon season we call the October November and northeast monsoon from December to February. That five months period they call the Maha season. Uh, that significant rainy season. Uh, especially very important for the agriculture and water sector in the country. So uh, in case of the med department activities, uh, actually uh, from the SASCOP outlook, uh, we prepared the seasonal forecast uh, and also the, uh, we prepared the seasonal forecast at the beginning of the season. In addition to that, each and every month we prepared the next three months uh, total rainfall forecast and uh, temperature forecast. Uh, this issue is the monthly basis. And also, in addition to that, we issue the month each and every month, uh, three months forecast uh, separately. In the, it's also monthly basis. Uh, in addition to that, because of that variation of the rainfall during the season, that now that there is a high demand for the weekly forecast and also the nine day forecast. Weekly forecast, we issue the uh, weekly basis. Nine day forecast, we issue the daily for next nine days. This is also a very demanding focus for the agricultural people. Uh, so uh, apart from that, uh, DOM issue the weekly agromet bulletin. Uh, actually, this is mainly confined to the climatological and weather information uh, and also the climatological uh, parameter, agri agricultural parameter, 30 average parameters also we included in that. But there is no agromet advisor in that bulletin. Uh, sorry. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we issue the drought uh, mon monitoring bulletin in monthly basis. Uh, for the preparation of the agromet advisories, actually that national agromet advisory is used by the uh, agriculture department uh, in the Na uh, Natural Resource Management Center, uh, uh, collaborating with the following agencies, Department of Meteorology, Department of Irrigation, Department of Agrarian Development, Mahavali Authority, Rice Research and Development, uh, Field Crop Research and Development Institute, Horticulture Crops Research and Development Institute, National Agriculture Information and Communication Center. At the beginning of the month, uh, we get together uh, all the meeting at the beginning of the month. Uh, we discuss the, the seasonal weather outlook and uh, we discuss that. Uh, we, uh, actually, when we issue the seasonal forecast at the beginning of the month, Agriculture Department, uh, they draft the uh, agronomic advisory. Then at the meeting, we discuss that uh, in deeply with that other institution and uh, finalize the uh, advisory and uh, issued in three languages in collaboration with the National Agriculture Information and Communication Center. Uh, uh, we, they communicated this uh, uh, center. Uh, this is the agromet advisory, that's format of that uh, agromet advisory. Uh, uh, actually, that when the special case also that when we, uh, this is one is significant one uh, at the beginning of the month of May, because month of May is, uh, we know the month of, end of the month, uh, month of May is the uh, onset of the southwest monsoon for Sri Lanka. Uh, mostly the, it started with the vigorous uh, monsoon rain, vigorous uh, rainfall uh, system, so that uh, they also mentioned this type of information in that uh, bulletin. Uh, and that they uh, communicate this one uh, 
through the all officials in the agriculture education department agrarian development department and mahavali through by emails and also the uh, publishing website we also publish this one in our website as well uh, and also they prepare the posters uh, as this is an example uh, in local languages and uh, they conducted radio programs each and every month uh, and bi weekly with the briefing and uh, told there is a toll free telephone service uh, 1920 uh during the uh, southeast monsoon 22 uh, actually uh, the onset was on time according to the uh, sri lankan climatology normally we experience in 20 uh, 5th or 26th of may uh, to the south part of sri lanka this time it was on time but actually this this, this time is very significant because it was stagnated uh, uh, around until first June or uh, not at first uh, it's around the uh, nearly fifth June uh, it was there uh, so the, this is the monthly rainfall anomaly you can see the southwestern part gets the uh, significant positive uh, rainfall anomaly during the season because of that uh, onset uh, the delay uh, the stagnating the monsoon trough over Sri Lanka for a little bit uh, longer period. Uh, so, so the month of June, actually, uh, we received the less rainfall in the southwestern part of the country, a little bit uh, uh, positive anomaly rainfall in the northeastern part of the country. But uh, I should say when average uh, values is a little bit lesser in that part during that June, July or month, uh, months. Uh, July also, uh, uh, southwest monsoon not much active uh, with except one or two days. Uh, but uh, the because of that weak monsoon condition, then other parts get in the afternoon thunder showers. So uh, they experience a little bit uh, uh, above normal condition. Month of August, uh, there was some uh, uh, systems developed in the uh, vicinity of Sri Lanka. So experience a little bit uh, uh, above normal rainfall. Month of September, below normal rainfall were received over most part of the country. What, what I want to emphasize this one, you can see the uh, distribution of the rainfall uh, as, as we issue the rain uh, forecast for the whole season. Uh, this, this, there is a much variation in the monthly basis. So this is very much a problem for the agriculture sector to plan their harvesting and uh, other uh, activities in that manner. So this is the uh, our forecast we issued at the beginning of the monsoon. Actually, SASCO forecast issued for the June, July, August, September. But in the country, we have to issue the uh, southwest monsoon we consider from May to September. So the, our forecast was uh, this one, uh, above normal, a little bit above normal in the northeastern part and below normal other part. But with the prevailing negative IOD condition, normally we receive a little bit uh, higher rainfall in our catchment area, hilly areas. Uh, that is why we just uh, give the slightly below rainfall in the our southwestern central hill. Uh, this is the actual we receive the rainfall. Uh, I think uh, the, this, uh, the coastal areas mostly receive the below normal rainfall. Uh, but the hilly areas which receive the, this is percentages of the uh, climatological value, uh, mostly near normal condition in the uh, other part of the country. Uh, I think uh, this part, this uh, from onwards, Mr. Ms. Aruni will uh, describe these uh, slides as uh, uh, she is the responsible for uh, these activities in the agriculture department. Aruni, over to you, Aruni. Aruni, can you hear me, Aruni? Okay, anyway, I will continue. Yeah, for the impact of monsoon rainfall variability during the uh, Yala season, that means the uh, 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 first season, that uh, actually uh, monsoon rainfall uh, received on time, uh, favorable. Uh, it, it was favorable to start normal yellow season. 
during the April, there was some rain, uh, that, but they continue land preparation uh, and uh, field establishment of crops continue to make to bay due to the late harvesting activities of previous season because there was no actually there was actually there was a problem with our uh, that uh, some uh, providing some uh, uh, basic requirement for the agriculture uh, that is why that uh, that season was delayed so that uh, field establishment little were uh, delayed with that reasons and uh, that uh, month of may starting that uh, for that uh, start of the southwest monsoon, there was a little bit heavy rainfall uh, last two weeks of the month of fed. Rain fed and some irrigated paddy growing systems, uh, that they face some difficulties due to the higher rainfall. Uh, the, uh, and some parts re sowing in some areas because of that, uh, some flooding uh, situation, uh, water logging situation interrupt the sowing of crops. And uh, Growth stage will continue during the southwest monsoon rains. Uh, wet zone paddy lands experience a little bit higher rains and a problem with the water logging situation. Uh, on the other side of the country, dry zone and intermediate zone uh, did not receive much rainfall. They faced some kind of water scarcity situation at that uh, uh, in during that period. Uh, harvesting stage is strengthening the southwest monsoon at the beginning of the uh, although we received the very less rainfall during the month of September, uh, beginning of the, uh, the uh, August, August and September, uh, end of the August and beginning of the September, there was a ra heavy rainfall still. So uh, it was uh, uh, affected the harvesting stage of the crops. Uh, and it also impact on the third season. In Sri Lanka, some farmers, they are doing the uh, three cultivation uh, seasons. Uh, according to the uh, rainfall uh, pat pattern of the climate of the country. And uh, they, it also some kind of, uh, there is a difficult, they face some difficulties. So actually there was no significant outbreak during that season. Uh, actually, the, when we issue the alerts, uh, extreme forecast, uh, so warnings, and uh, we communicate to the agriculture department and they also communicate to the farmers as well. Uh, and also the our 10 day forecast and weekly forecast, uh, this also uh, uh, has been communicated to the farmers. Uh, Agromet advisories, uh, there's a benefit, of, especially actually, nowadays our farmers are earlier, they, uh, they are mostly done according to the, their traditional knowledge, but now they understood that traditional knowledge is not much valid with the uh, emerging climate change. So they are very, uh, uh, keen on about the uh, scientific uh, information provided by the uh, med department, agriculture department and other agencies. So uh, there is a uh, good feedback from them. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Uh, uh, you have nicely demonstrated that uh, from your uh, Ella season and Moha season and how the uh, there is a mixed feeling, you know, uh, about the dry and the wet and how uh, the this has been communicated to the farming community and also you, your uh, nine days forecast day, uh, daily you know you said is very very demanding and like that and uh, you have number of the dissemination channel also so i think that uh, i mean it's a very systematic kind of things has been uh, given and uh, it's a wonderful presentation we are looking forward to interact the Sama and Sapo more with you and see that uh, how, I mean, best can be done in a very collaborative mode. Uh, thank you, Madam, very much. Uh, now our uh, next presentations will be from Mayan Mar. Uh, she is Mrs. Han Sui, she Assistant Director, Agrometeorological Division, uh, DMH Mayan Mar. Over to um, uh, Mrs. Han Sui. Yes, sir. thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Over to you. Yes, sir. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, you can make a full screen. Uh, we can see, mm -hmm. but you can make a full screen, right? Okay. Can you see now? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. 
Fine. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Hansu, Assistant Director from uh, Agrometeorological Division. Um, today, first of all, I would like to thank uh, all of the organizers uh, from the uh, summer and Sapong. And in my presentation, uh, uh, I mentioned uh, only the um, uh, so what monsoon uh, seasonal rainfall 2022 in Myanmar uh, because uh, in in, in uh, our uh, agreement session uh, we uh, support the only the uh, agrometeorological information uh, so uh, that is why I, I I would like to discuss about the uh, so what monsoon seasonal rainfall 2022 in Myanmar in my presentation, there are four parts. Uh, uh, first one is uh, I would like to present the uh, climate information timeline in our DMA. Second one, uh, how we issue the Southward Monsoon Forecast 2022 in Myanmar. Uh, and also, the uh, uh, I would like to review the Southward Monsoon Seasonal Rainfall 2022. And uh, uh, the last one is uh, uh, we are doing the uh, some activities to improve the agromat uh, advisory services in our DMA. Uh, firstly, uh, in this uh, slide, uh, in our DMA uh, issue, the uh, focus uh, in, uh, like this, uh, but uh, I, I, uh, I would like to highlight the uh, last uh, four part uh, uh, for Dandy, Manly, uh, and uh, seasonal focus for the uh, Southwest and Northern Monsoon season. And in here, uh, before we issue the uh, seasonal forecast, uh, we call it the, uh, our observation data and also we call it that the uh, uh, output from the uh, statistical and also dynamic also. And also we also reference the uh, uh, sun output from the uh, uh, SACOT and ASEAN COT and also uh, WMO Lee Center, uh, something like this. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, uh, we are uh, DMH issue the uh, general weather forecast for 2022 rainy season uh, on the uh, 28th April uh, in this year. And also for early monsoon season, uh, we issue the uh, forecast on the uh, 28th April like this. Uh, and also here we can see the some uh, parameter we issue in the uh, uh, our focus. Uh, in, in, this, in this slide, um, DMH issued the uh, weather forecast for the 2022 mid uh, monsoon season uh, on the uh, 28 June 2022. And uh, for the um, late, late monsoon weather forecast issue on the uh, 28 August 2022, here we mentioned the light uh, sun parameter in the um, uh, rainfall condition and also Bay of Bengal condition. And, uh, um, in the early monsoon, we issue the uh, uh, monsoon uh, onset day and uh, late monsoon season, we issue the uh, withdrawal or sower monsoon like this. And here we can see the, uh, we uh, in, in left hand side, uh, la, uh, here we can see the uh, onset day, our observed onset day in sower monsoon in this year. Uh, like uh, compare with the uh, 30 year normal in right hand side. Uh, we uh, based on 30 year 1981 to 2010. In this year, um, Sawa Monsoon said that in, in our southern Myanmar on the 30 May, uh, in the uh, in, in data, data area on the 90 May and central Myanmar 25 May, and uh, the whole Myanmar on the uh, second June. Uh, when we compare the 30 year norme in the whole Myanmar, uh, in the Sawat monsoon onset, there is uh, 40 earlier than the norme here, like this. In the uh, withdrawal condition here, uh, in, uh, in this year, um, uh, Sawat monsoon will draw from the uh, northern Myanmar on the 23rd September. Uh, from uh, central Myanmar on 28 September and from that area on the 5 October and the whole Myanmar on the 11 October. When we compare with the 30 year norme, it's uh, eight days later, uh, later than the norme, norme date. 
are in. Or in this uh, slide, so we uh, in left hand side, uh, we, uh, we have the uh, observed uh, rainfall in early monsoon in this year. Uh, and and La Panza is study year normal. When we compare these two uh, map, uh, here we can see the uh, uh, northwestern part of Myanmar and central Myanmar. We observe the uh, below normal rainfall. Uh, but for the in the uh, uh, northern part of Myanmar, we call that Kachin. Uh, just compare with the Nome in Kachin state uh, is the uh, above Nome, but other uh, other part are the uh, Nome condition. So here we can see clearly uh, this uh, this uh, flowchart show the in the uh, red color bar is the below Nome and or uh, green color bar is the above Nome. In previous slide. Uh, I mentioned about the uh, northern part of Myanmar, we call the Kachin state. We observed um, above Nome a uh, rainfall condition, only one state, but other uh, remaining region and state, we observed uh, below uh, uh, Nome and below Nome rainfall condition in early monsoon season, especially for the central Myanmar area, we call the dry zone. Uh, here, uh, just compare with the actual and normal rainfall in early monsoon season. Uh, this is the uh, um, mid monsoon season. We observe uh, our actual rainfall and uh, compare with the 30 year normal, 1981 2010. In this map, also here, in uh, early monsoon season in northern Myanmar Kachin state, we observed above normal rainfall. But in the mid monsoon season, in, here we can see the light, the uh, uh, northern Myanmar and northwestern part of Myanmar, Kachin and Abazaga and Chin also we observed the uh, below normal rainfall. And also the in western uh, western part of Myanmar, in the we call the uh, Rakhine state near Bangladesh, uh, we can see clearly uh, observed uh, actual rainfall is uh, less than the uh, normal rainfall. So we observe the uh, below normal. Here we can see uh, in northern part of Myanmar, Kachin and Abazagai, also in Chin and western part of Myanmar, and uh, only one central Myanmar in the Nibio, also below Nome, and also Rakhine, northern part of Myanmar, and some uh, dirty area, west and east Bago, uh, we observed um, below Nome rainfall, but other eastern side and some central area it, uh, above normal rainfall and other remaining state and regions, we observe the uh, uh, normal rainfall condition in mid monsoon season. Uh, here is just compared with the actual and normal rainfall. Here I highlighted the uh, uh, rust tiger area. Yeah, uh, uh, is, uh, we observe the uh, below normal rainfall condition. Uh, this in this slide, we can see the uh, actual rainfall condition in late monsoon season. Here in left hand side, uh, here in the also the uh, northwestern part of Myanmar, uh, Kachin, uh, Apazaga, and also Chin, uh, some area in central Myanmar, we observe the below normal rainfall compared with the 30 year normal. Here we can see the like of uh, uh, Kachin and Apazaga in northern part of Myanmar and uh, Nibido, uh, also the uh, below normal rainfall condition and uh, other in Chin, uh, Makwe and Kaya State, we observe the uh, no, uh, above normal rainfall. So in, in the three monsoon season, like uh, Ali, uh, only uh, in the northern part of Myanmar, Kachin and Abazagai, we observe the um, Nome and uh, above Nome rainfall in the uh, um, early monsoon season. But uh, other left uh, mid and late monsoon season, we observe below Nome in the uh, uh, northern part of Myanmar. They yeah, just compare with the actual and normal rainfall. I, I highlighted the uh, rest cycle, observe the uh, below normal condition. Uh, uh, after uh, I, I discussed about the, the uh, um, somewhat monsoon condition 2022 in Myanmar, here um, we issue the 
Our agro message is to the agro meteorological bulletin uh, three times per month. Uh, we should every uh, first 11 and 21st of each month, uh, we issue the agro map bulletin uh, like this. And in uh, agro map bulletin, we have two parts. Uh, first part is uh, we review all the agro meteorological conditions for the previous decade, uh, parameter here I mentioned like this. And second one, uh, uh, we issue the uh, weather focus for the next decade, uh, or uh, the uh, for seasonal focus and ten day focus uh, generated by the Hagwata from uh, and DMH in Nibido. Uh, our agronomy session we follow the uh, all of the focus from the uh, um, Hagwata issue in our agronomy session. Uh, we follow the focus from the Hagwata issue, uh, and and then uh, we issue the uh, three agroma bulletin in three time per month here like this. And after we issue the uh, our agroma uh, bulletin and uh, focus, uh, we disseminate the our focus to the uh, concerned department like uh, uh, department of agriculture. Uh, uh, this is just example, and also uh, the Department of Agriculture, they have the mini studio, we call the uh, Pharma Channel, uh, they issue the our uh, focus like uh, uh, seven day focus, uh, we, uh, they upload, uh, they broadcast the our uh, seven day agro meteorological focus in TV. And uh, for seven day focus, uh, uh, we uh, disseminate the seven day focus to the uh, uh, pharma channel and also they upload the data on uh, data in uh, internet uh, we can find easily on the internet uh, and uh in this year uh we issue the uh, uh dande agro meteorological focus uh, uh from uh, we uh issue the that uh, the uh, then they go meteorological focus on the uh, newspaper, uh, like our public newspaper, uh, we can find uh, easily on the newspaper every uh, 10 day we issue uh, the agro meteorological bulletin. In, in this agro meteorological focus, uh, uh, some parameter we mentioned like the uh, Bay of Bengal condition uh, and also rain condition, maximum temperature, minimum temperature, uh, related humidity, uh, potential evapotranspiration, and uh, swine water balance condition. In our agroma session, we issue the uh, only agro meteorological bulletin and agro meteorological focus. Uh, we cannot issue the agroma advisory. Uh, so uh, this is our ongoing activities in agroma session. Uh, after we uh, finish the uh, uh, webband project, uh, we have uh, some activities. Uh, one is updating existing agro meteorological bulletin. Second one is the uh, we are doing the uh, to double o agro climatic advisory services. Uh, this is uh, our ongoing activities in our agroma session. Um, in our agroma session, uh, uh, not, not our agroma session, in our uh, DMH, uh, we need the uh, some research for the light. Uh, uh, now we are facing the uh, uh, changes of climate, and also our Myanmar. Uh, uh, Ninety-five percent of the uh, rainfall we observe in the southern monsoon, but in our DMH, we have uh, um, few uh, research paper uh, that for the uh, how much uh, uh, climate change effect on the the our uh, agro uh, agriculture uh, but very limited research so uh, near future uh, i hope uh, we go co um, cooperate with the uh, summer and safa uh, we can get the some uh, research activity in for the uh, how climate change impact on the agriculture and also for the we can get uh, the um, how can we improve the our agroma advisory? Uh, this is my conclusion. Uh, in 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 for my conclusion, uh, the southern monsoon set in over southern Myanmar on 30 May, uh, data area on 90 May, in central area on 25 May. Uh, for the, the 
the home Myanmar uh, in observed in 2nd June, uh, but uh, when we compare the normal date is uh, uh, 6 June, so in uh, two, two day um, earlier than the normal. Four days earlier than the normal, sorry, and and also for the uh, second one is the uh, so one monsoon withdrawal from Myanmar like this, um, and uh, when we uh, summarize the uh, uh, so one monsoon condition in Myanmar in, in early monsoon period, it was observed that the whole country had the normal and below normal rainfall. Is that Kachin State? Uh, the Kachin State. Uh, we observed the uh, above normal in Kachin State, and mid monsoon period, it was observed the above normal rainfall in the Xi'an. Uh, in, in eastern part of Myanmar and Magui region, and also below Nome in Kachin, Chin, Rakhine, Abazagai, Nibido, Pako, and the uh, Nome River in the remaining state and region. And uh, during the late monsoon season, uh, it was observed the above Nome in Chin and Gaya, and Magui below Nome in Kachin, Abazagai, Nibido, and observed Nome River in the remaining state and region. Uh, this is our summary from the um, early, mid, and late monsoon condition uh, in uh, 2022 Myanmar. Uh, the last one is the our agreement session. We are doing the uh, some activities uh, to upgrade the existing agro-meteorological bulletin and to develop our agro-climatic advisory services for future. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much. Attention. Yeah, thank you very much, Mrs. Su. Uh, I think that you have uh, nicely presented that the activities of the agronomic division in in, in uh, Myanmar uh, with the coordination with the DMH and you have mentioned the different parts uh, in in the country how the monsoon in early mid and late portion how they had it particularly the more concern in the northern part and uh, the most interesting part your uh, in posts as a decadal uh, agnomate adversary service, which you are giving uh, this all this information to the farming community to different channels uh, like TV, uh, then farmers channel, and then internet, then newsletter. Uh, this is wonderful actually. And this World Bank, I think uh, the under World Bank project, very significant work has been done. Uh, so your last word, which we are here for this meeting, that Samas form they will be definitely, you know, uh, be in close coordination with you for whatever you have done very significant work, which we can make more, you know, useful to the farming community, the joint uh, ventures. Now, uh, uh, my uh, this next uh, uh, two presentations are there, but I am not very sure uh, because I could not reach out to them. Uh, but still, I will uh, uh, just invite them if uh, he's, uh, the, uh, he, if they are here and they can give uh, at least about, if not the agriculture part, maybe the you know how the monsoon behave as per the forecast or seasonal forecast. So I'll be requesting first from Mr. Abdul Musin Ramij. He is a director uh, meteorology Maldives. Uh, I'm not sure you are here, uh, Mr. Ramich. Uh, I don't think he is here because I could uh, we could not reach out to him. Uh, similarly, we have uh, could not reach to Pakistan, Dr. Muhammad Hanif. Uh, so he is the actually former chief meteorologist, uh, Park Med Department, Islamabad. Uh, uh, Dr. Hamid, you are with us. Anif, I don't think they are with us, but uh, okay, let us see if they can join that part. Now, uh, all of you have heard a very excellent presentations uh, from Srijit, uh, then Dr. Bal, then Bangladesh and Nepal, uh, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, uh, Maldives, Myanmar, uh, Myanmar. So now uh, this floor will be open. Uh, so uh, I'll be requesting if you have any question, you just introduced uh, yourself and uh, and also mention to whom you are asking the question. Now the floor is open for 10, 15 minutes.
Dr. Das, you have any question? You yeah, can nice. start with. Yeah, nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm just listening. Okay. okay. Uh, sir, uh, I think it is time for a taking a group photo, sir. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yes. Before the so, I would like to request everyone to switch on your video so we can take a group photo, a screenshot. Yeah. Kindly, please. It's still, uh, I. Again, I am requesting everyone, please switch on your video so you can take a group photo. So, which will be utilized in the Sama newsletter. Also, also, it will be a good memory for everyone. Um, ready? Three, two, one. Okay. I've taken one and one more. Thank you very much. Thank sir, you taken, much. sir. Okay. Dr. Das, you have you okay. have any question? Uh, not really. Uh, okay. But I would like to hear our all uh, feedback uh, about how the monsoon uh, 2022 performed as compared to the Saskov consensus forecast, uh, was it uh, satisfactory? I mean, this is a question addressed to all the countries. Uh, whether no, if you ask all the countries, it will take a lot of time then. <laughs> time <laughs> constraints anybody can also. Respond. Yeah. Anybody yeah. can respond on that. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, can I, yeah, please. Can I ask a question? So, yes, yes. Question? Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, Vais Ramkrishna from Kreda, Hyderabad, India. Uh, my question is to Srijit. Uh, this is regarding the SESCO forecast versus observed rainfall during uh, 2022. I think it's a good uh, presentation you made and we compared also how these two, two uh, uh, SESCO prediction has been uh, successful in many of the regions. But the only thing is uh, two parts, I think. One is that uh, Indo-Gansetic plains, the uh, prediction is a little poor, as well as the peninsular part of India. It's interesting, in, the, in 2022, there have been a lot of rainfall in the lower latitudes, and on the upper parts, there are a lot of uh, uh, dry conditions. Not only in the India, but in the, the globe, you can see in Europe also, there's a lot of uh, water deficit was there. And uh, we have a high rainfall conditions in the tropical regions, and more so in the near to the equator. And if you see the actual rainfall conditions, uh, what I found is that uh, even the southern hemisphere has contributed a lot of moisture that uh, helped in having a heavy rainfalls in the peninsular region and along the Arabian coast also. As you see that uh, the high rainfall was seen in the total coast area and the western coast of India. So, but somehow this is uh, not being taken into consideration in SESCOF. Uh, I don't know whether they're taking it, it's very good. But uh, I would like to show one photograph, uh, which is very interesting. And in fact, I tried to put it in the, the presentation earlier also. Just a minute. I'm not getting it. So we find that a lot of moisture is being sub supported from the southern hemisphere, right up to even 30 degrees south. Uh, that moisture is coming right up to the Sri Lankan region and then affecting the into the Arabian Sea, supporting a lot of uh, activity there. So will Srijit would like to say something about this? Uh, sir, actually all this, uh... We are generating this uh, forecast using the dynamical mo climate models. 
so uh, yeah, most of the uh, yeah, large scale features that will uh, automatically this model will uh, all climate model will take care but uh, as uh, yeah, we have seen that some region we are not uh, the forecast is uh, as large deviation especially the uh, yeah, the uh, yeah, foothills of himalaya that uh, region usually uh, yeah, in the lanina years and all we are getting very good rainfall but this year we are not received much rainfall because the uh, monsoon trough is mainly in the south of, south of it is normal portion and uh, the low, many low pressure system uh, um, uh, travel westward so uh, yeah, and another thing is that uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that is the, the uh, uh, it is the main reason for not uh, getting much uh, rainfall uh, over uh, the region. Uh, uh, Srijit, I don't know whether you can see this photograph I'm just showing here. Yeah, is it no, visible? No, I can't see. You can see, see here so that a lot of moisture is coming from uh, even up to 30 degrees south. Yeah, that, that uh, yeah, 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 but yeah. somehow you are not uh, considering this uh, input of moisture into the system, monsoon system, which is keeping it very active. It is uh, yeah yeah in uh, yeah that cross equatorial flow is very good. There's a yes. continuity here. This the whole, the moisture is continuously moving. You can see yeah. right up to Africa and then even up to uh, parts of America. It's a big huge system is supporting is there, and maybe the easterly jet stream also playing a specific role because you can see that the curving of this rainfall, especially during the months of uh, September, right from the China coast coming into the Indian Ocean. So, could uh, Israel just stream play a role here? Yes, uh, that is just stream here, and uh, even uh, we get many remnants from the West Pacific, also, as I mentioned in my presentation. But uh, uh, they, we have to do more research on whatever the large deficiency over the foothills that we have to take. Care. This is photograph here. Again, you can mm -hmm. see a large amount of uh, thing across the country, right? Africa up to US, American region. Yeah, we have to look more. Into yeah, I that. think uh, you have to take into consideration Southern Hemisphere conditions also in this ESCO. Uh, this uh, on, already all climate model, uh, it is already considering that whatever cross equatorial flow, everything. But uh, yeah, yeah, we are not using any statistic, uh, yeah, statistical model. This is based on objective seasonal forecast. Yeah, I agree. Model. But 22, 2022 has been a little peculiar. That's what I say. The more studies are required to analyze. Yes, yes. Why that that, that we, have to, has we have to more analyze the, more. That not only in to... India, but over Europe also. Okay. Right, that thank, you. Have to do. Yeah, thank, thank you. Any question from anybody? <laughs> hello, hello, sir. Yes. Yes, I have a question. Yes, uh, uh, I have question to uh, Dr. Bal. Uh, in 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 his presentation, uh, I found that the uh, one of the portal and uh, a government advisory issued uh, twice a week, and also the fifty million farmer already registered in that portal. So uh, I would like to know the. Um, uh, before uh, issue the focus, how to uh, communicate each other, like a uh, extension worker or look at farmer, and also like a uh, uh, IMD and also DOA, uh, how to communicate each other, and uh, can you uh, please share the experience from the uh, US side, your and uh, from India? This is my question. Is clear or not? Yeah, question is clear. Over to Bal. Dr. Bal. Maybe he is not available at it, but I can supplement uh, Dr. Su uh, that, uh, you know, uh, in, in India, uh, this uh, uh, meteorological department and agriculture department, they are doing very cohesively uh, for the dissemination of the adversaries, right? Okay. Yes. So uh, with the request of the meteorological department, uh, agriculture department and the Delhi office, they have created a farmer's portal, okay? And this farmer's portal, you know, we have took initiative to register the farmer through the portal. So uh, whenever they are registered immediately on, on the specific days we, where we are, you, 
giving uh, 160 characters, you know, uh, this uh, very important uh, advisories we are sending and they are getting onto their uh, mobile phones. And also as it is a multi-channel, uh, multi-channel uh, systems is there. So we are having a WhatsApp group, we have an internet, we are having different kind of, uh, you know, cable TVs in a different uh, area. So all these things are being, you know, doing some of the things are quantitatively, we can tell this much of millions, but but if you take in a holistically huge number of people getting the, the most important reason is that, and this is very, very effective to the extreme events when they need this advisory at least two days in advance like that. So that's why as it is very effective and Baal has shown that how much cost benefit ratio, it is very, very emerging now. And government of India is anticipating that maybe another couple of years, all the farming commodities and 96 million farmers will be reached. Okay. Uh, okay, good. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your answering, okay. sir. Okay. Anybody has any question to anybody, just like Sue? Well, I can have a small query with Dr. Srijit. Yes. Srijit is there? Dr. Srijit? Yes, Srijit is there, yes. Can you hear me? Hello? Dr. Srijit is not responding. Srijit, you are with us? Maybe this line is disconnected. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah. So, if uh, no questions is that, uh, I requ I'll request all of you. Uh, this may be uh, Dr. Dash uh, will be, uh, but you know that you YouTube link is there. You can hear again all the presentations or like that. So, you can again may you ask through email. Uh, we'll share all the email address also to you. Uh, so that the main intention is not that we have to give this kind of presentation. Main, main intention is that how this, uh, I mean, throughout uh, South Asia, you know, we can uh, um, uh, kind build a kind of sensible type of forum, uh, Sama, Safam and others, so that, you know, uh, maybe next year we'll get some kind of uh, benefit of it or like that. We have a number of plans, so what Dr. Das has mentioned some uh, physical meeting also we are uh, uh, planning now, but nevertheless today, so whatever the things has been made, uh, I, I could not expect that that much will be coming, you know. Uh, one of the uh, things I am submitting to all of you that uh, to make South Asia uh, uh, agriculture meteorology in a very, uh, very sensible shape, uh, World Bank is helping. Uh, even uh, we have requested WMO also to do the part. Even you know in India we are having a meeting from 29th April to uh, you know second of uh, uh, this uh, this uh, 22nd of November to uh, second of uh, December. That is Indian Meteorological Society. You know they have discussed various point how this forecast can be improved, observational part can be improved. They are also I had uh, mentioned that how this uh, you know. Uh, Indian Meteorological Society be connected with Sama and Safam, you know, so that uh, they, that will make more strength to all of us. Uh, uh, and slowly, slowly, you know, uh, at last, uh, you know, uh, the Sama members and Safam members are working very hard and we have come to a certain uh, level. And we feel that with South Asia Hydromet Forum, which is there, and maybe with IMS, maybe uh, we will be go uh, very faster. So uh, we have a two distinguished persons with us uh, 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 in the concluding session. Uh, so uh, I will first request uh, uh, this Dr. ML Sester, who is a vice president of SAMA uh, to give his uh, uh, concluding remarks to, on this occasion. Over to Dr. ML Sester. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Navamsu. I think the last statement from yours, uh, yeah, I very much agree with that, that the achievement of this uh, workshop or this gathering is not only to present the papers, but to build the collaboration among the countries. So I agree very much with you. And uh, so at this uh, 
the concluding session, I would like to look at the, you know, the first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Das, the Secretary of uh, Shama, and uh, Dr. Rator from Shaform, I think, for their relentless, I mean, the work to realize this kind of thing. And uh, Dr. Chagi, and uh, we have a host of distinguished scientists from South Asia uh, representing various organizations and institutions. I think it is a, a great gathering to discuss on this impact of mental variability on agriculture. And at the same time, the agriculture, this is agropolitan uh, adventure. So uh, at this time, I would like to, because I just came back yesterday from Sri Lanka. So it was on the, uh, you know, we are talking about this, uh, the importance of agriculture, especially the climate smart agriculture. So how to meet the demand of the growing population. And uh, at this time, very shortly, I would, because I represent Asia Pacific Network for Global Change Research, and which is a platform as just, I think uh, Dr. Navamsu has uh, related that there are other organizations like WMO and others that, are, that can help. I think EAPN can help. And this time uh, there was a proposal training workshop on the agriculture, uh, the agro, uh, agriculture and agro advisories. So uh, there are six countries represented and there are many participants from these countries, about two to three participants from each countries. And uh, so far, I think 300 early career scientists have been uh, I mean, the, the trained. So let us use that platform, the APN platform, which gives the, you know, the funding, which I think the SAMA is definitely looking for uh, to, to conduct some kind of, uh, you know, the training and workshops. So let us say, and uh, by saying that, uh, I think I would like to definitely go for this, big, you know, I would like to say that, you know, there's a good represent, representation. Of course, we have in the list about nine, but the seven has actively participated. And I'm happy that, you know, at least there is a participation from Afghanistan, even though I think there is no paper presented. And that is what I think I feel, uh, the, some kind of a zeal and enthusiasm to be a part of uh, this uh, joint uh, venture. And this, we are organizing this uh, joint, uh, I mean, the joint workshop in 2022. And this is, I think, the beginning. I hope that we will be able to continue this further every year to get acquainted with the impact of monsoon. As you know, the, you know, the monsoon is so much changing uh, at the present context of even the climate change. So at the same time, we can update ourselves with the many activities and the development going on in the agro-advisory services. You know, there are some countries uh, where I think still the agro-advisory services are not there, but the agro-meteorological, you know, there's a forecast are, have been made as our uh, respected uh, representative from Sri Lanka has mentioned. So I think uh, this is what I think I, I wanted to and I, I, I wanted to stress, especially with some of the, I mean, the presentation from our uh, Srijit, Dr. Srijit, I think he has so much, I mean, very illustratively mentioned about the different factors, you know, namely from the, maybe the ENSO, IOD, and even the MZO, you know, which are influencing the monsoon activities. So, and these are some of the factors I think we all should look at, and there may be many more that will be on the way. Uh, so through the research, we will be able to see. And uh, with uh, Dr. Paul, I'm really uh, excited to see, you know, in, in, in the extreme event, like the thunderstorm activities and the lightning, in out of 696, 236 are in Bihar. And that is very, I mean, you know, these are some of the, uh, you know, the extreme weather that we are experiencing. And definitely, I think uh, in the country, in the region where I think more than 60% or more than that are uh, involved in the agriculture uh, sector. So definitely, I think, you know, we are experiencing the experience 
and at the research from India. I mean, we also heard from Bangladesh and uh, other other uh, and uh, Bhutan, Nepal, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and I am happy to see in Bhutan, you know, this uh, the role of uh, the social media. Of course, I think you know almost all the countries it is happening. And even in Nepal, I think we are also giving this agrometeorological service and the forecast through the you know to the farmers uh, by SMS messaging. But the, I can see the I can see the you know the the, um, the response from the people in the social media, and that is very good. You know, some of the one or two aspect that I think our delegate from Pakistan has so that. You know, we can feel how the people have been affected with this kind of service. I think this is very good media where I think we can use uh, effectively in interacting with the user community. I think the big challenge is the scientists have lots of information, but that information, how we convey it to the people, still I think it is a big challenge. I think uh, this kind of, uh, with the modern development in the, uh, you know, the ICT sectors, I think we'll be able to make use of that one. And, uh, you know, uh, at this, because uh, as we see, we talk about the forecast and the seasonal forecast and a long term forecast. I think the data, nowadays, new tools and the data sets are coming up. I think at this stage, I would I'd like to recall, you know, last November, I think uh, IITM Pune. And, you know, the, the relentless effort from the scientists from IITM Pune, they are able to, to build the global model with a resolution of around six kilometers in the tropics. You know, that is, a, I think, a big achievement and hope that these, the product from this global model, I think uh, the people from this region, I think we can use effectively in enhancing our forecast uh, as well as in other activities. So I think we witnessed uh, in this workshop uh, various analysis and research presented, and it's good to see the efforts from respective countries in the region. I think uh, it is an opportunity for us uh, to learn from each other's uh, achievement and the experience. So, I think issuing the advisory, agriculture advisory is one thing, but how that agriculture advisory has been accepted or are these, these agriculture advisory having, uh, how effective it to the farmers? I think that is the one part I think we have to really look at it. Because a lot of resources are going on, a lot of research are going on in developing that advisory. So let us, I think that another aspect we have also to look at the utilization of these advisories in the field. I think I can see from some of the presentations that it is happening, but let us make use of uh, to conveying our scientific research and the scientific practices to the community level. I think that I think, uh, we wanted to see that. So we see the so from this uh, workshop, of course, you know, there are so many participants. It is so good to see that. And we see the concerted effort from the South Asian countries in, uh, I mean, addressing the agriculture sector, uh, which has affected the weather and the climate. I think uh, I don't take much time because I am allotted only five minutes. So I think with this, I, th I would like to thank all the participants for their wonderful and illustrative uh, presentations. Uh, and uh, I learned a lot. I feel this, I, I hope our participants also learned a lot of, uh, a lot from the presentations because uh, I, I really found it very, very useful. Uh, of course, this is our first joint venture. It is very, uh, Nice and definitely, I think I have to thank uh, uh, Dr. Navansu for his wonderful, I mean, the, the moderation to the field. And with this, a few words, 
and we hope that we will meet again and we, we will be able to conduct such workshops, such, such fruitful workshops in the future. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shrestha. It's a very impressive concluding session. Just to add to that, whatever I correctly mentioned, that three things we have done. One is that fruit print already been established in South Asia about Sama and Safam. And we have now identity. Now the next uh, uh, approach will be our visibility to the policy makers, to the scientists, to the farmers. And we have to see that how uh, this will be growing or like that. So uh, this is wonderful. Uh, I mean, beginning has been done today. So thank you very much, Dr. Sista, and looking forward to guide us in future also so that the Sama and Sapam can begin more stronger and stronger. Uh, our next uh, eminent personalities with us uh, is uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul Maid. Uh, he is the vice president of Sapam, and I know him personally. He was the director general of uh, Agriculture Extension Division. And when I met him, I have seen that he knows everything about Bangladesh, about agriculture. So, and uh, we are very fortunate that he is a vice president and he will address to us. So it is, now it's over to uh, Dr. Abdul Maid, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Navanchu. Uh, am I here with? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Navangshu addressed me that the, I know everything of agriculture in Bangladesh. I think not so, <laughs> but a uh, little bit because due to the uh, works I have done in the agriculture department from the beginning, about more than three decades. That's why. However, uh, first of all, I thanks to uh, personnel of SAPOM and SAMA for organizing this type of very valuable uh, workshop on uh, monsoon 2022. That is the, we have seen the reflection of last monsoon, what, what about the pattern and the systems running. Uh, so uh, I uh, respected uh, our president of SAFOM and SAMA and the secretaries and other dignitaries, distinguished participants from the different countries of the South Asia. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, I think your patience is uh, uh, with passion sharing. Uh, a many person still they are participating, and once I have seen uh, about fifty participants in this workshop. And uh, uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Srijit for giving the main paper, presenting the main papers and the other papers from the different countries. Uh, so from the papers we have seen uh, the climate, uh, due to the change of climate or climate changing issues, the patterns, weather pattern on the machine pattern is going to the change from the normal deviation. And uh, you have seen in Bangladesh, uh, last monsoon season is very much uh, differentiated uh, from the last, uh, four decades. So each and every country, uh, we have seen in the pattern of uh, the rainfall and everything is uh, going to be changed. So it is alarming for our agriculture uh, sector. And uh, if from the Sama, Safom, and the uh, Saskops and other uh, organizations, a lot of scientists and the meteorologists here and also the agriculturist also just to generate the uh, agriculture uh, meteorological forecasting as well as uh, the agro advisory services for the benefit of the farmers of South Asia. It is important that there is more than he uh, uh, uttered that the important is that to reach the agro advisories to the beneficiaries, to the farmers uh, for saving their crops for uh, boost up the production in their field. And I think uh, it is very much important uh, that, and the monsoon is the, uh, monsoon pattern is important for the, one of the important rice season. There is the almond season in the South Asia, which is completely uh, producing in the rain fed condition. So, uh, so rainfall pattern is the important 
for the uh, for cultivation this uh, almond uh, because uh, in the last season we have seen we have to address the farmer we have to give the advice to the farmers to run the uh, agriculture uh, mach uh, uh, irrigation machineries for giving the supplementary irrigation during the transplanting and during the other management issues up to the harvesting. And not only that, sometimes heavy rainfall damages in the winter rice also. Um, uh, uh, in our country, you know, whenever the heavy rainfall in the um, Asham and Charapunji, uh, there may be a chance of the flash flood in the north uh, uh, eastern part of the country. There is the Haur Basin area, which is the only single cropped area is the borrow rice or winter rice. Uh, that's why uh, I think uh, it is the very uh, nice uh, discussion through workshop, how we can uh, help the farmers of the South Asian countries to uh, boost up their agricultural production, giving the agro meteorological uh, forecasting and the advisories to them so it is important here for the discussion. I, I think, and uh, not only that, disease and pest infestation also relate with the uh, weather uh, condition. So uh, here important is the uh, weather forecasting should be accurate, accurate uh, accuracy level should be higher. And here the lot of scientists nowadays, they are working for uh, model running through model uh, different model running the uh, for giving the accurate weather forecasting and uh, not only uh, I think not only for agriculture production also save the lives you know a lot of um, lives we have um, uh, uh, seen for the, uh, lives has been lost because of the uh, thunderstorm uh, and the hailstorm and thunderstorm also because the lightning. So uh, it is important to give the uh, forecasting for the lightning to save the lives from, of, of the farmers who are uh, actually, they are uh, work when they are working in the open field in the um, wet condition. So I think we have to think for that. And uh, uh, it is important to uh, improve, uh, strengthen the cooperation of SAFOM, SAMA, SASCOPS, and the also Hydromet Forum, South Asian Hydromet Forum, and also we can uh, coordinate with the UK Metropolis and the World Meteorological Organization. And if the coordination is more and more strengthening, then I think we'll get the, um, uh, we, we can help the each of the countries uh, of the South Asia for giving the accurate weather forecasting, uh, also uh, to, uh, to generate the agro-meteorological advisories for the farmers, and also to disseminate to the farmers through the uh, mobile messaging, through the video, from, through the uh, others, uh, social media, we can reach to the farmers to uh, for giving the advisories uh, to the farmers for the benefit of their uh, of, uh, agriculture production. So I think uh, it is uh, very much, uh, we discussed here, the, all the uh, presenters and the, all the discuss and they are very much uh, 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 cordially, uh, they discussed about the future activities for the benefit of the South Asian countries uh, for the benefits of the farmers of the subsistence countries. So uh, it is, uh, uh, I think, uh, at the concluding session, uh, I think uh, uh, my request is all of the dignitaries here uh, to generate the, uh, to strengthen the cooperation and the coordination of these organization, not only that uh, uh, through exposure to the policy level, of each of the countries, uh, uh, Ministry of Agriculture or Ministry of Planning and others to sensitize uh, to all the other farmers and the related uh, departments uh, to give the, uh, for highlighting the importance of these 
agrometeorological information forecasting etc for savings the crops and also uh, for a boost of the agriculture production and also savings the life i uh, that's uh, uh, all from my part uh, so thank you all for patient sharing and uh, organizing this type of workshop we'll uh, we'll way forward uh, for future activities uh, we are uh, we are uh, actively uh, we are actively participated in these types of workshop and the activities for uh, future uh, improvement of this area thank you all thank you very much thank you very much sir for your uh, concluding address where you have mentioned the wide spectrum of this uh, whole system of weather forecasting and adversities and you the last word sentence you made that a lot of national international collaborations you know that will make a lot of sense to this kind of initiative in fact we are very over ambitious that uk met office uh, you know even american met society you know uh, they are having a very you know, strong where they are also imparting to the policy makers in the government also so we are also uh, hoping that maybe sama and sapum uh, will be a very important part in the policy making the government in south asia also so uh, thank you very much sir uh, dr das if you agree that uh, after the concluding session uh, I, i we want to all of you want final words from you and professor tagi based on this today's deliberation so i'll be requesting you dr das to give your final words based on this today's uh, uh, i mean workshop over to dr das okay uh, thank you very much uh, dr navansu well it has been a great session today uh, we could organize the joint uh, workshop uh, joint workshop between sama and sapom about this uh, saskov uh, uh, forecast versus the reality of the monsoon uh, you know one of the main objectives of our uh, organization is to reach out to the people of south asia both sama and sapom now this is one of the very important uh, uh, objective uh, i mean although in today's program despite all our efforts you know at least seven countries out of nine uh, could join but uh, still i am feeling concerned that why the remaining two countries could not join despite our best efforts you know last year uh, in fact uh, this uh, uh, kind of workshop we started last year itself but there was only done by this sama alone about this sasco forecast versus the monsoon uh, reality and uh, last year i was happy that you know all the nine countries participated in that including the uh, director general of meteorology of pakistan med department dgpmd participated he himself presented in fact about the monsoon uh, 2021 versus the sasco forecast and so also from the maldives and all the countries Uh, they you know participated even from afghanistan amd uh, the director of the amd uh, presented mm. about the monsoon of 2021 versus the saskov so what lagged us this year i do not know uh, that despite you know, now both of us are joining together sasko i mean sama and sako but yet you know we could not get the participation from uh, two important countries of uh, reason so we have to uh, try to i ensure that you know how we can best reach out to the people of all these countries that is one of my concern the other thing i would like to share of course i have already announced is that uh, <clears throat> although some of us could not participate in a live in today's program but the entire proceedings of today's program will be available on the youtube although i mean you already in fact it's still live live streaming on the youtube uh, we missed the initial 20 minutes uh, because of the technical glitch uh, but uh, that also we shall cover up because we are having the recorded version of the entire video so we shall upload the entire video once again on the youtube so that people can watch it from the beginning to the end those who could not you know attend to this program so that will be available on the youtube and uh, the third thing i would like to announce also i have already said in the beginning that uh, you know i mean uh, many of us uh, in this region uh we do not have the actual background in meteorology so we are working on 
know mythological aspects you know the forecasting the climate uh, and agriculture and everything but still probably many of us are non meteorologists you know uh, by training and with that in mind in fact sama is going to start shortly a weekly lecture series on the fundamentals of meteorology and atmospheric science uh, in fact that is also you know open to the uh, post graduate students and you know, the phd students and also the uh, i mean the young researchers who are uh, interested in uh, you know, working in field of meteorology and atmospheric science climate science etc but it is also open to anybody in this region uh, and people can register um, uh, and attend the entire course so in fact uh, the first uh, 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 program that we are going to design is for 12 weeks or 16 weeks 16 weeks yes 16 weeks every week one uh, lecture every saturday starting from 7th of january so we are going to announce this uh, uh, to all the members of sama but uh, I would like to request Dr. Nabansu that you can also communicate the same to all the members of South Home because we don't have the data database of members of uh, South Home with us. So I mean, we can make a Google group so that you not know, just like the summer Google group. You know, you can have a South Home Google group so that we can uh, at one go and announce uh, these kind of activities to all the members of South Home also. So all those who are interested in uh, attending these lectures, in fact, the lectures will be given by eminent people. I mean, uh, there are. um very very senior people who have worked throughout their you know life uh, in this field uh they will be giving the lectures on fundamentals like we are going to start the lectures uh on atmospheric physics the atmospheric physics the starting lecture uh, the 12 lectures will be on atmospheric physics but before that the first four lectures will be like a orientation program because many people are not aware of what are the scopes of this field Uh, what are the applications so you know, where do they get job I mean, because they are targeting the young younger generation so we also would like to tell them that if you choose this as a career what will be your your future scope you know where will you go to get the job uh, in this field uh, and kind of things like that so the first initial four lectures will be about the orientation program uh, of meteorology uh, and then subsequently the next 12 uh, lectures for the 12 weeks will be on the atmospheric physics fundamentals like uh, atmospheric radiation atmospheric thermodynamics cloud physics and so on every which week one lecture for about one hour or so so people can attend that and at the end of the module we will also uh, give certificates to all the participants so it's like any online course which people you now sometimes attend you know especially in the computer science field people try to attend and learn certain packages you know uh, through online training so same, same something similar to that this uh, training program we are going to start and simultaneously we are also working on to uh, give a training on nwp i mean that will be slightly at advanced level because you know the prerequisite for that will be a good knowledge of atmospheric physics and atmospheric dynamics plus some computer science background so that also training you know on nwp will be shortly uh, giving to all the members of sama but definitely it is not uh, limited to the members of sama but also to all members of sapo as well and similarly also we are you know already um, uh, kind of you know on a advanced stage of planning a training on satellite meteorology and other important you know branches of meteorology like radar meteorology and so on so this is all i thought you know to share with all of you uh, and uh, so from my side on to you dr lavanzu Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the, your first part is that we could not reach to two countries, but uh, hopefully we'll be doing and see that how this best can be done next time. And all the informative message you have given definitely we will be uh, sharing with you and this. Uh, so thank you very much. So our next uh, for, uh, final word from Professor Taggy, APM Taggy, because we we know that he is the first uh, made this concept. of sama and sapo if we can do some he actually proposed some of the topics and ultimately decided so sir uh, i am uh, floor is with you uh, uh, how do you feel that how this workshop and how how we going go forward over to professor taggy thank you namansu and uh, uh, let me once again thank uh, dr rakhor and you who have uh, helped in organizing this workshop and we are missing uh, guidance of dr rathore nevertheless um, uh, your efforts have paid rich dividends 
but for two countries i think having a good participation of seven countries is is, is a great success um, i see distinction marks so and we should be able to get uh, two more uh, uh, in the next time uh, there were excellent presentation both by srijath and uh, a very good overview of the monsoon its variability and uh, the services which they are providing uh, of course um, uh, there is a need for further working uh, closely learning from each other and also see coming out with a road map where somewhere the capacity building is required we do the capacity building jointly with the sama and sa form and also the extension services which are so important the communication of uh, agro advisories uh, so these two things are very important uh, will should work on these um, and the second uh, stage is how to use the sub seasonal to seasonal forecast in, in agro advisories uh, that that is the i think weak area as of now but uh, i'm sure in coming years uh, we'll have good um, uh, skill in these forecasts and we should be able to start making use of these as well in providing the agro advisories so overall uh, I, i am personally very satisfied of, with this organization of this uh, joint webinar and uh, presentations made especially the contributory remarks to the by the two vice presidents of the sama and sama officers and uh, so thank to them and all participants and senior uh, colleagues who participated in today's webinar thank you so much and we wish that this partnership goes strength to strength in coming years thank you uh so our last part of this meeting will be the vote of thanks and i'll be requesting dr samira uh koyam from uh, he is a associate professor of SKU AST Kashmir to give vote of thanks over to Shamira Samira you are with us uh, maybe she she told me that she has some problem but she but nevertheless sir uh, on behalf of Samira uh, i am just uh, now giving the thanks to uh each and all uh, of this uh, today's workshop uh, all the 53 participants who have joined and who is uh, due to some reasons they are not available now uh, but uh, may, all of may, them may, 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 may i make one suggestion please yes yes why not yes yes sir see, i am happy to see the uh, where the everyone is the enthusiasm with which people different countries have participated and the way they they addressed the problem of monsoon variability is very interesting only thing my suggestion is we should have a preview meeting it is sometime during the month of may mm. when the monsoon forecast long range forecast of the monsoon will be available so that mm. we can see how different countries can plan to address the problem of variability depending upon the forecast issued by the various agencies for the monsoon sir this is a excellent you know uh, i mean the proposition you know this is uh, i mean i mean uh, maybe in the month of may Uh, or maybe in april when the uh, sasco forecast will be given i think we should assemble and uh, and plan the future activities and and when with the future activities how they can each and of them so will uh, collaborate with each other sir this is an excellent and definitely will be doing uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, dr ramanna rao uh, he is a very uh, distinguished uh, agrometeorologist and uh, sir is always you know advising us uh, how to proceed or like that so uh, uh, again we go to the vote of thanks uh, uh, my thanks to dr professor avm tagi who is the president uh, of this uh, uh, sama uh, my uh, sincere appreciation to dr ls rathod due to some uh, you know 
family problem he could not join but uh, he has given lot of you know enthusiasm and instruction uh, last uh, one month that how to do this uh, so though uh, dr das i need not to tell because he is a part of the system but uh, his encouragement and a uh, lot of discussion uh, i mean uh, uh, jointly we have done and our two uh, uh, distinguished uh, you know personalities in the concluding session uh, dr srishta and dr uh, dr mohit uh, uh, what dr uh, professor tagi has mentioned an excellent kind of concluding event so we are very you know thankful for their you know uh, kind presence in this meeting and also special hearing at the end of this uh, workshop and all the distinguished persons uh, dr uh, dr ramakrishna and uh, dr raman narav and who others who have joined and all the participants in south asia uh, 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 countries and also the respective director general of this meteorological department and uh, director of agriculture uh, who have uh, could not join due to their assignment or some other reason so Uh, sama and sapum are grateful to each and everyone who has joined and who has not joined and who will be joining in future for the making this kind of initiative more stronger and stronger so that uh, ultimately uh, we are very ambitious we, we know that uh, what professor tagi has mentioned and other mentions and ultimately we will be reaching to the uh, you know uh, i mean unreached and unprivileged farmers Uh, in the in the south asia uh, that is the target uh, with this you know we are working together so thank you to again all uh, one and of you and now uh, with the with your due permission we can close is it okay dr dash yeah yeah no, just may i propose that you now this ask of uh, forecast versus real monsoon and its implications on the agriculture can be our annual activity annual joint activity of some and some i think i i think so it should be annual activity just just one more point please yes sir hello yes continue sir you see what i say is this particular year the areas around the more traditional monsoon trough near the bay of bengal has Uh, oh, our badly affected by the monsoon. Mm. Whether there is whether there is any significant shift in the uh, monsoon trough this particular year compared to the previous years with above normal rainfall. Yeah. Yes, Doctor Das, we can. Clear. Yes, you can continue, sir. Yeah, Mama Krishna, sir, continue. yeah because this year is very peculiar you know something mm. very different and uh, not only in india as i said in europe also we have found this kind of system so some kind of changes come in the monsoon activity so that we have to really have to pinpoint exactly what happened is it a temporary change or is it kind of a change that's going to happen in future also but that's very interesting or important factor we have to look into so especially the input of moisture from southern hemisphere that we have to really take into consideration now and see that to larger area the picture we have to see and see how that thing is influencing the monsoon system so that will be very important study so some more more active studies of the monsoon 2022 is very essential <laughs> i hope a lot of research papers will come on this topic i think you okay. said uh, whatever yeah. rightly suggested you know uh, we may uh, add in some specific webinar on to that who yeah. has uh, done and doing this kind of yeah. work exactly on that to that, that 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 can make lot of focus on to that yeah. okay yeah. you can give two three months time so that people can yeah. prepare and think on those yeah. activities right. uh, some distinguished studies if they come i think they can make presentations that will be very right. interesting right thank right. you So with this, we can close, Doctor Das. Yeah, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Then we close. Muskar. Thank you. Muskar. So thank you all. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you thank you all good to see dr mandira thank you mohan and... das thank you sir we can't hear you because your mic is mute Dr. Thank Bindra, you, thank you very much. I was there towards the end. Yes, uh, thank you so much. I think it is good you, to hear about that. Yeah, thank you, thank, thank you, you Dr. Namsu. Yes, okay. bye bye. Bye. So I just uh, stopped the recording, right, sir? And also yes, live yes, streaming. Yes. Did you take the group photo already? Already done. Oh, already, already taken, but you missed. So I just take one more, please. Uh, okay. If possible, I would no. like to request. All of you again, please switch on your video. So no, later I will okay. make some Photoshop. You can Good. share with us also. Yeah. Yes, thank sure. You. I will share it soon. Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please. Just one more. Yeah. We can pick up also from ready? the video. Recorded video. Yeah. Yeah, I will get it. Okay, no sir, uh, ready. Thank you. Thank you, Monty. One, two. Three. Yes. Okay, done. Thank you. Great. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye -bye. thank you. Bye. 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 So okay. Record off. So I need to stop the live streaming also. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. Uh, Doctor Fatima, are you there? And if we close the session automatically, live streaming will also stop, right? Okay. So I just, okay, sir, I just, just, just close the session. session. Yeah. Okay, okay.